But yeah, start it now. Let's see. It, it usually takes a couple of seconds to... And people usually show up. Yeah, we're live now. Okay. Like, let's see who's going to be the first person in chat. First person in chat gains a... I don't know, a shout out. Alright, we are live. It's Saturday afternoon. I guess it's afternoon for everybody. Almost everybody, still. Should be. Like most, most people should be at least 12 o'clock. <clears throat> nice, let me, let me, I'm gonna share the live stream on my Discord server. I forgot. Okay. Um, dun dun dun. As soon as I see the live on your end, I'll share it on mine. Oh, nice! You haven't you, ha you, don't, you don't see it yet? No, I, I'm on your I'm on your page. I'm gonna read like re like restart YouTube. And yeah, just, you should probably I'm probably on. refresh to be able. To see. Oh, never mind. It's private. I'm dumb. It's on private. I forgot to make it public. Oh. <laughs> this. <laughs> I was like, wait, nobody's showing up. This is weird. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I'm gonna do the public now. That, that's gonna work now. All right, we All are right. live. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I see it. Okay. How's everybody doing today? The first person who speaks in chat gets a shout out. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. What's up, Kane? You get the shout out for the first one to speak in chat. Zone, Llama Casey, Dark Knight, Ajok, Llama Casey again. How's it going? Like the live stream, guys. Come on. Today we have a guest. We have Lightning Snow with us. How's it going, everybody? And we're gonna be doing stuff, talking about Naruto and, and um, bouncing off ideas off of each other, opinions, I suppose. I think we have similar views in some aspect of the series, different views in others. Uh, so we've done, we've done, we've done videos together like in the past and mm -hmm. we rarely ever get into like a, you know, a serious argument about, like we, we usually see eye to eye about well, so stuff, yeah. everything. Um, so. And first order of business, you guys should go in the description right now. And the first link, um, it's Lightning Snow's channel. Go subscribe to him because tomorrow, there's gonna be a new video in his channel, and it's That's right. a I video. Night. Yep. Um, so, I think mean, if, if we reach the donation goal, we can probably t tell them that the, the you know uh, the video title, this, what the video is about. I think this is good goal for us. Yeah, well, us. I, did, I did a quiz yesterday uh, for the first time on my community post about which video they thought I'd be posting, just as like a little fun. Oh, thing nice. So, Nice. Uh, if they, if they, if they, if they answer, then they should know which one. But either way, yeah, we can. We just let them know by. I mean, it's it's gonna be Madara versus Obito. I mean, you know, it's it's a very popular one that I keep seeing all the time. And I think if someone if someone tells us to in the chat to talk about that one, I think we're gonna like not do that just because that is the video topic for tomorrow's yeah, video. Yeah, exactly. So, and um, I think I think we gotta. You know, some interesting arguments, even some like what if scenarios, uh, narratively speaking, as well in the video. So it's going to be interesting for sure. I can see that, like, that video maybe boiling down to or like evolving into another like part video. Like, I can see someone asking about an extension of that topic as far as the different versions that we would that we used in, in the video. Mm hmm. So, I, um, so yeah, I, I could definitely see that. And, the other, the other, um, the other topics that that I gave on that quiz, uh, someone was telling me to do all of them. I was like, oh, I'll do all of them for sure. Just I wanted to get this one because I, I want to make sure that my subscribers know that if, if, if they submit requests for me to do first battle videos, that I will do them because you know I mm -hmm. there there are people who come up with ideas for first battle videos that I would never ever really thought of. And um, some people really like to see those characters fighting together. And I think um, White Mask Obito, which is the Obito we're doing in tomorrow's video, is an interesting fight against almost anyone that's powerful because he has, you know, ways to just go around many hacks, abilities that may be thrown against him. It's just that sometimes 
the other characters are too powerful for him. Yeah, I would say it seems like people in the war arc, like specifically Obito in the war arc, is like a a uh, what do you call it? A a good scale to power to 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 power uh, you know different characters. You know, it's like it's like one of those things where because I did a video a long time ago that I've never seen a topic done on actually, and it's Kabuto versus the Five Kage. Like I I've never seen that done in a verse battle video on mm. YouTube. So I, I did it once before. And, he, like the guy that I was doing the video with, he's like, yeah, the five cocky seemed like a good, like, you know, power scale for a, a person who's top tier, like pitting the five cocky up against one individual who's like super OP that might be, you know, strong enough to take them all five at the same time. So, um, so people like Itachi or Orochimaru or, or Obito, like I said, so, uh, I, you know. Was like five, um, but... did Kabuto have any Edo Tensei with him, or were it just Kabuto against the five? We gave, we gave two scenarios. We gave one where he had Edo Tensei, and then the other one without. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously, if he has Edo Tensei, then he pretty much stops the five. The five hey, it depends on which Edo Tensei, to be fair. But if he has every single one of them, then like there is nothing much they can do. It's an army. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we we gave, we gave him two scenarios, and the other scenario without him, because I think Kabuto. Is a, we, I, mean, I think at the end of the video we were very like 50 50 but I, we, I think we gave it to the five kage because mm -hmm. of onoki's because like onoki is going to be the biggest problem for kabuto in that fight like without a doubt i mean particle so, style is pretty rough to deal with yeah so that's what i'm saying it's like but then we also got the arguments like well if, if kabuto is able to use that blinding light technique that he used against Itachi and Sasuke, right. and it's like, yeah, the right Kage can't get through that, you know. So, um, and with Onoki's back problems, there ain't no way that, that man, that man would probably kick the bucket right there <laughs> with his back problem. But then, um, um, I think there are many interesting fights to to do with the with the five Kage, like even Itachi and Sasuke that fought Kabuto versus the five Kage could be an interesting topic. Um, I think with oh, are we talking about like with Edo Itachi like specifically? Yeah, yeah, the one like Itachi yeah. and Sasuke that fought Kabuto. That could be interesting against the five Kage. That um, would be a pretty tough fight. I, th I think a lot of people would already assume that like Itachi and Sasuke would win because Itachi's OP, which I mean he is, but I mean even Edo Itachi's got his weaknesses. I mean, yeah, and, and Gara can seal people, so it's not like they don't yeah. have a, like a means to to do so. Yeah, um, it could be interesting. I mean, plus, like that. I, as I mentioned, they seem to know a good bit about Itachi's Genjutsu, or at least when we're speaking relative, because they were they were already assuming, <clears throat> well, it was the five Kage, but it was Shikaku who was assuming that the whole uh, Zetsu manipulating people's chakra flow or chakra signatures or whatever, they, like, he already assumed that that was Itachi. Like, and I'm like, wow, they're... I mean, they were wrong, but they were pretty, like, informative mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. you know, Itachi's abilities as far as Genjutsu. So, and they really think... thought Itachi was, you know, doing all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy to think about. I mean, it's like the first person you would think of is Itachi. Like, oh, okay. I mean, and then Inuichi butts in. It's like, well, that's probably a little bit too much for even Itachi. But yeah, like... I, think a lot of people, I think a lot of people saying Boruto in this chat. Like... Yeah, people people were saying Boruto is not canon. Some people are saying it's canon. What are your thoughts on Boruto? No, uh, I think it's getting. I think it's getting tolerable. I don't want to say it's getting better, but I mean it is. It's definitely better than where it was at, you know, in the beginning and to mid midway through the series. But it's getting interesting, I suppose. Did you read the manga um, or just the just watch the anime or what? Both, uh, to some extent. I don't read the entirety of the manga. Uh, I I read some of the manga and then I also it's like a combined effort of me reading the manga and then me like reading summaries of where the series is at in the manga. Uh -huh. So like, because again, I, I said this in a video a, a few months ago that I did about Boruto series and why I don't watch it. It's it's one of those things where like I still want to be invested in it because it's Naruto related, but it's really hard for me to get invested in something that's like that I feel is getting the Pokemon treatment. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I felt like Pokemon was dragged out for way too long. And I didn't watch Pokemon past the first like era of it. 
like when there were the first like 100 or 99 or 150 Pokemon or whatever. Like I didn't watch it past then because I thought even as a kid, I was literally looking, I was thinking too deep into it. I was like, maybe this is like, this is gonna, this is going on, gonna go on forever. It's never gonna end. And it did. And, you know, <laughs> I know, finally, yeah, after like what, 10 plus years? Yeah, so, so I, and don't get me wrong, I love Naruto and the idea of Naruto, something, something Naruto related, keeping it going is cool, but I'd rather anthologies about certain characters that we don't know instead of a sequel series, if that makes any sense. You yeah. Know, like, uh, I think that would be more interesting. Play. That's because well, Naruto and Sasuke are too popular, so they have to use those characters to get attention, I suppose. Um, well, they're getting well. They're, well, they're they're becoming infamous for being nerfed. So it, it's yeah, it's really it really sucks to say that, but like, I, I feel like in the Boruto series they should be way stronger than than the, what they have been or what they've been shown. So I don't know. I just so you know about the plot twist, the thing that happened. Before the, the 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 hiatus, or not? Uh, to some extent. Okay. Uh, are, you, are you talking about with the, with Ka uh, Kawaki? Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know everything, but I do know like the gist of what he did and why, uh, not really necessarily why he did it, but I, I know who's not in the series, quote unquote, okay. <laughs> right now. Okay. Who's not in the series? <laughs> Oh. That's like the best way I know how to, how to say it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers to people who haven't seen it. I mean, I I wonder how long the hiatus is going to be this time. Uh, I think it's going to come back in September? Or August? But it's going to be, I think it, it's three months. What do you, how long do you think the time jump is going to be? Uh, like... probably, probably just three years like Naruto, I would say. If I have okay. to guess. Um, Hoif is saying Sasuke's IQ nerf is consistent board to another L. <laughs> I'm saying, well, I mean, who was it? Ikishi, Ishiki said that Sasuke was pretty analytical and smart. Like, I mean, he says like that. Like, at, the, the only thing the the, the Otsutsuki say when they fight against Sasuke is, is that that damn Rinnegan. And then they're like, ah, he's teleporting away from me. And Sasuke just uses Emon Tejikara. He doesn't use anything else. <laughs> like he doesn't. I'm even... saying, dude. Like we haven't used. We haven't. At least as far as I, I'm aware, we haven't seen Sasuke use any other of the Rinnegan's abilities. Yeah. Except for. Chibaku Tensei, but that's we saw, it. We saw like, Chibaku Tensei, and then one time he used the Praetor Path on Naruto in the final fight. Um, oh, yeah. And I guess you can say he used Praetor Path to absorb the Tail Beast Chakra into the Susano as well, but um, he doesn't do much with this Rinnegan. Like, honestly, like, and, and you know, it's funny you said it because I'm, I'm looking at the, the, the upper left hand corner uh, video that you got in the, in the yeah. square where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stab <laughs> like, bro, like, Chenra Tensei would have been the perfect. I mean, I'm just saying, like, Sasuke's got a sharding gun and a rending gun, and he should have enough time to see that coming. And I don't know. I, that Almighty Push would have been the perfect solve for that. Well, you could argue but, he was out of chakra or something, but still, like. That is true. Uh, now I'm looking at it, he doesn't have a sharding gun active, but. Uh, I don't like, know. Like, just, just think about it. Um, there are. The Predator Path's a problem for any fight essentially because the Praetor Path doesn't require chakra it actually gains you chakra you get more chakra if you use it and right. why would Sasuke when Naruto charged his last Rasengan in the fight in the final fight why would Sasuke use Chidori with a Matarasu instead of just absorbing Naruto's Rasengan that like a a a a and get Naruto's chakra and then win the fight um, the Praetor Path is tricky uh, it very, very, it really is. It's one of those things. You know, but just imagine if, well, actually, no, I don't know. Can so let's say for conversation's sake that like if Sasuke made like actually made clones. I mean, I know he doesn't like really in the series. But well, he doesn't bore to. He doesn't bore to. Like he shows the shadow clone jutsu to bore to. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, well, I meant to say like in his skill set. Like he doesn't really use it as as a yeah, way yeah, of yeah. fighting a lot. Uh -huh. but, like, let's say if he did. Can the clones use their respective running con abilities by uh, themselves? Or? They should be able to, yeah. I mean, when oh. Naruto uses Shadow Clones, they can use every single Jutsu Naruto uses. 
true. So, like, imagine that. Like, imagine if Sasuke made, like, six clones and they became the six paths of pain all over again. You imagine, like, the, the amount of pressure they'd be able to put on an opponent. Like, they wouldn't be even paths. Like, they would have every single Renegon ability. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, so just imagine, like, how much pressure they'd be able to put on a freaking opponent, man. It's just so, it baffles me. And as I'm saying, like, the guy's talking about uh, Sasuke's IQ. I'm like, bro, that would be like the perfect solve. Because he has, he has plenty of chakra to draw from to make as many clones as he need to. So, I mean. And he can drain chakra from other people using the Praetor Path, too. Exactly. Oh. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if Kishimoto really had to, like. I don't know if Kishimoto had to sell in his own mind how well or how much they had to be nerfed in order for Boruto and Sarada, uh, Sarada and everybody else to kind of get their catch up. You know, I don't. I don't know. It's just really weird to me. I, and that's just another reason why I don't watch Boruto a yeah. lot, I'll be honest. Yeah, because if you think about it, if anybody uses the Renegon hyper optimally, um, they're going to be a beast. Like, Nagato was actually using the Renegon how you're supposed to do that in the fight against Naruto and B, because um, he essentially beats KCM1, Naruto, and B in like five seconds. And if Itachi doesn't save them, they're dead. <laughs> They're really oh. dead, yeah. They would they would not have been able to do anything, which is crazy to me. Like, like uh, and, and one of the, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You're no, good. you're good. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna like, I was gonna give a snippet of a, of a future video. I don't know when this is gonna be, but I had a, vi a, a video idea of like talking about like, an, I'm making an argument for Nagato being probably the strongest reanimation during the war uh maybe even more so the Madara if it was a one-on-one -on -one. uh and i'm not saying that for a fact yet i'm, I'm still gonna do my research on it and i'm just saying because i don't know looking at all the reddit uh, the reanimations i'm like bro i don't think there would be anybody that could be a full power nagato if he's knowing the ins and outs of his running gone and how to use them I, I don't know i just think that nagato would probably be able to solo every reanimation that was summoned during the war i mean Aside i think, think moderate i think Madara, um Madara, minato and hashiroma definitely beat him but oh true yeah i, oh, I forgot about the hokage I, well uh, also there's an argument for itachi um the problem is chibaku tensei because it's implied that itachi wouldn't be able to destroy chibaku tensei without lee and arto's help but nagato is like a beast just because like you can't touch the guy with ninjutsu and no. this applies for Madara, too, because uh, it's the same shtick, but he doesn't even have to, like, do anything. Because when Naruto is um, uh, fighting against him, that, that tug of war with his own soul, when he's about to extract Naruto's soul, he tries to shove a Rasengan on him with the KCM limb hands, uh, chakra hands, whatever. And he, there's just, like, an orb of, of absorption around Nagato that just... Well, the Rosengan fizzles out, and Nagato drains Naruto's chakra there. So, well, and the thing too is like, I mean, you gotta think about it. the two strongest people on in the alliance at the time. At that time, were almost killed, like you said, within five seconds of of fighting Nagato, and which is crazy to me. Like I was saying, like, I think out of everybody, like, I mean, out of everybody that was reanimated, aside from the Hokage, I feel like. And obviously, aside from Madara, I, I'm pretty sure he'd be able to solo just about... I mean, I guess if Itachi got Izanami on uh, uh, on uh, Nagato, that would, that would probably work. Or Koto Matsukami at the... At, well, I don't see how you'd be able to get Koto Matsukami well, on. It depends. Nagato. I think it depends on, on how the fight starts, because if, uh, Itachi has to make sure Nagato doesn't use Chibaku Tensei. Um, if he can get him with a with a Totsuka blade before he can do that, then Ma Itachi wins because we see that Nagato cannot absorb the Totsuka blade with the Breeder Path, which is one of the few weaknesses that it has. Mm -hmm. um, so, is there anything that? No, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but I just want to get someone else's opinion. Does the running on ever have like any kind of visual perception, or am I wrong in that? What like, do you mean visual perception? Like the way, like, because you know how the Byakugan and the Sharingan offers visual oh, help like, in some. Like chakra, you can see chakra, for example. Yeah. Yeah, the Renegon like... can see chakra. We see that when Pain is uh, confronting Tsunade, he looks at her feet and he sees um, chakra, like because she is okay. uh, 
trying to make sure he doesn't blast him away or, or, or stuff like that with the Shinra Tensei. Okay. okay, so then... And it's the evolution of so, the Sharingan too, so it, it will have the same power as the Sharingan, but it's just more powerful. That's what I thought. That's what I was thinking, because I've heard people say arguments that they like the Sharingan can't see track. Because, like, like, whenever... No, literally, uh, it can't. It's, it's, it's in the panel, in the manga panel. It's very easy to, to counter that. Well, whenever... Uh... What was it? It was Nag when it was Nagato when it Itachi pierced Nagato with the Totsuka blade. Mm -hmm. Was there like a? I had to go back and re I had to go back and read it now. But wasn't there like a cloud of smoke or something like that in front of them or in front of Nagato? And then that's when Itachi um, pierced. I the thing is the hit itself happened off screen, if I'm not mistaken. Let me let me let me double check. And then and then they just cut back to the panel where. Um, the Tutsuka Blade's already, you know, piercing Nagato. Let's see, right. well, I think it's point, chapter 552 or 551, let's see. Because, oh, it's 551 when the hit itself happens. Let's, I'm pretty sure we, we don't see that the sword actually hitting him the, the exact time it happens. Um, well, I think what well, I pointed in saying that was that like I've seen people say that Itachi can like pierce uh, Nagato like he did in the oh, war, no, which yeah, is yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, Nagato is staring at a cloud of smoke. Let me let me um, save this page. Let's see, Nagato Itachi, Oops, Um And let me show it to the live stream. Um, but go ahead. Well, like, cause that, cause then my argument was like, well, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to word this, cause like, wasn't Kabuto was in control of Nagato? So was it really Nagato? Cause if it was Nagato, then I feel bad for Nagato. That's kind of like an anti feat for Nagato, because then that means he can't see Chakra through the cloud of smoke. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So like, um, but no, that, that's that. that's implied to be the thing. Um, you can't see through um, smoke because even when Pain was fighting Naruto, Naruto used a smoke bomb to disguise his um, Shadow Clone Rasen Shuriken trick. So um, smoke true. seems to be able to block vision, which is implied okay. even even for the Sharingan itself because. Um, remember the the hidden and miss jutsu like the when when Zabuza uses that against Kakashi, he does it on purpose so Kakashi can't really yeah, see. But then yeah, but then in, in in the fight between Itachi's clone and Kakashi, it, Kakashi does the same thing, and he's like, "Whoa, that's a great technique." Unless someone uses, has the sharding gun, and he's like, "Why don't you just come on out and stop playing hide and seek?" I'm Wait, like, which which fight are you referring to? Whenever uh, the Kaze, in the, during the Kaze Kage rescue arc, when Kakashi fights Itachi's therapist, now it might have been just been in the anime, so we could probably exclude it if that is the case. But Kakashi used the hidden mist jutsu for a second. Oh, he uses and... him like yeah, so so that Itachi couldn't do like genjutsu stuff. I think. Yeah, that's probably why. Like... He, even though he had the 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 the, the, the Sharingan also, I think he would prefer to negate Itachi's ability to use that. Okay, so I wasn't really sure a hundred percent if that was just like to blind him, or if it was just to prevent him from using genjutsu. But we can see here. Um that Nagato, uh, like first, there's the big explosion when Chibaku Tensei is destroyed. And then Nagato is standing in front of the smoke here, and then um, he just gets kind of blitzed by the right. Totsuka Blade, because he doesn't even react to it. Um, well, I also see that like Itachi says, oh, you're back. Meaning that like, I guess- Oh yeah, no, in, th in, this, in this panel right here, in this two small panels, for the first one here, um, Nagato is being controlled. Okay. Um, and then in the second, uh, it's when he loses, like, Kabuto loses control. And then you see the, okay. the Renegon's a little bit brighter. Okay, um, so then we, it's a, more of a, I guess it, it can be an anti feat for Kabuto then, that he didn't react enough in time. But I guess Nagato probably wouldn't have been able to either. I mean, I guess, probably like, like not. Before, I would say, because Nagato is not exactly very fast, but even still, if Nagato w w was able to absorb um, the Tosca Blade he would have, because even if he gets hit by something, he can still absorb it afterwards. Like Amaterasu, right. for example, he can absorb it after he's hit. So... Right. So would the Tosca Blade be affected by something like Kamui? Or no? Good question. 
can't say for certain. I would say probably yes, because Kamui was able to affect um, Truth Seeking Orbs. Uh, True. Uh, Kamui is just like a counter for anything, essentially. I know. I was looking at Swag Kage's um, manga Kyo Shining on ability countdown or whatever, or like, to our. Yeah, like countdown, I suppose, but. And he was saying, like, number three was Kakashi's version of Shining uh, Kamui, and then number one was Obito's version of Kamui. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I mean... Seems accurate, I mean, yeah, man. I mean, you imagine, like, if Obito had both for, like, the entire series, bro, he'd just be... Well, yeah, he, no, I was gonna say... It, it, would, be, of... it would be kind of like how Kakashi was in the Kaguya fight. It would be insane, like... I guess if honest is Susano, because he probably wouldn't. Well, I don't know. He wouldn't have because I was saying he, he wouldn't no, have six paths. No, he probably would. He probably wouldn't have awakened the perfect Susano because yeah, he wouldn't have six paths powers, and that's you know the implied reason as to why he was able to awaken uh, the perfect still, Susano out have, of the gate. Yeah, but he still have. He would still have like Kamui on repeat with the Hashirama cells. So it, yeah, it, it, it'd yeah. be ridiculous. He'd it'd be crazy. Be, it'd be pretty crazy. Um. So what do I want to take this out? This uh oh here. I'm gonna ask the Sasuke dead <laughs> dead yet. Oh god. <laughs> Not and yet. That's, that's, that's Not yet. a fair question because I whenever when I remember thinking the very first time I saw the uh opening scene of Borto, I was like, bro, like Sasuke's dead. It's very much implied that he is dead because yeah. Boruto is using Sasuke's sword, Sasuke's uh, Headband, which we've already seen how Boruto got he the headband, that. but uh, and then he's also using Sasuke's cape. Oh my like, bro! <laughs> Naruto's obviously that. not dead. He is in that uh, pocket dimension, and he will remain there for the duration. I think until at least the clash between Boruto, Boruto and Kawaki there in the in that epilogue part when we actually get to it in the story. I wonder how far they're gonna drag this out. Like, I really wonder like how much they're gonna keep going with this series. I'm not sure. The, time, the time skip is right around the corner, and then I mean, now the time skip's happening now, essentially. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, well, I mean, like, I mean, like, whenever we get back, like, if the yeah, time yeah. skip when we get back is like right around the corner. Then I wonder, like, I, I wonder how far they're gonna push it, like, because it seems like everything's coming to a head real fast. But I mean, they could just make filler after filler after filler, I suppose. I mean, going, I like, I don't watch the anime. Um, I just read the manga, because, you know, less waste of time. I mean, there there have been interesting filler arcs, for sure. Like, I think... Really? I the mean, only one I watched so, was the was the time travel one, because they, they went back to Naruto, but it was terrible. Because that, aside from a couple scenes, that was terrible. Like, uh, some of them were, some of the scenes in the, in the arc were actually kind of like, wow. Um, which... I mean, obviously, all all the all the scenes had to do with Jiraiya. So, I mean, like I mean, that interaction with Sasuke and Jiraiya was the one that I think I would probably say is the most like interesting to me. But I was like, as far as like filler episodes, there have been a couple that have been like at the very least funny to me. That's kind of like interesting to see. Like, uh, what was it? It was like Father and Daughter Day when and Sasuke was trying to bond with. Sarda and he's kind of making a complete fool of himself because Sasuke has no, <laughs> no uh, interactive capability. Uh -huh. I think <laughs> so, I saw that. I like, think I saw that. No, it's like it's more no slice of skills. life, right? It's more slice yeah. of life. He, he's like asking Kakashi for advice, isn't he? Yeah, or like Kakashi's being overzealous with his Make Out Paradise book, and he's like, "Oh, I got some advice for you." Uh -huh. and, yeah, so like that inter that whole interaction was pretty interesting. Like stuff like that, it's kind of funny to see like Sasuke out of his own element for a little bit, because um, it gives like a side of Sasuke that we don't usually see. Uh huh. Um, so it, it's kind of like because it's funny to think about how Sasuke you was this villain for a good part of Shippuden, and now to finally see him let his walls down and you know. I don't know, it, it's, just, it's really cool to me. It makes that whole, like, villainous arc that he had kind of worth it to see him finally find, like, be a, to be a family man in the village again. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, I'm a, I'm a Sasuke fan. Sasuke's my second favorite character in the series. Yeah, I, so, I like Sasuke, too. I really like him. Something old because of it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I like him because of his complexity. Like, during the, the, 
the Ninja War specifically, like there was always, as I was reading it, like chapter by chapter, I was, as it was coming out, I was like, bro, like, where is Sasuke at? Like, where is his head at? Like, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? And that's what I like in a character. I like to know when I, I like to, when I don't know what a character's thinking, because it gives them more complexity, you know what I'm saying? And so, because mm-hmm. you can see it in Sasuke's behavior during the war, like, you can tell he's happy being with everybody again <clears throat> as he's fighting, but then there's also that, like, hidden agenda he's got, and you don't really know it, like, what he's what yeah, he's and actually planning to do. Naruto actually knew that something was off from the moment Sasuke arrives, because he doesn't even say anything to Sasuke, he's just like, sup? Let's do yeah, this. For real. Like he doesn't. Yeah. He, he's not trying to bring him back to the village anymore. He knows he'll have to deal with that later. But now we have to deal with the war. Um, it's very yeah, interesting. But you, but you can tell though in Sasuke's like tone whenever Naruto gave that though. Team Seven's back and you know finally back and all together. And like you can tell Sasuke's like psyched to be back with everybody. And so it's like it's like one of those things where you know, you're glad it's happening, but even everybody else, even Shikamaru noticed it too. He's like, something's, you know, Something. off. Like, and then we have some hints here and there before Sasuke's revolution. Um, for example, when Sasuke and Naruto combined the Amaterasu and Arasu and Shuriken to hit the Ten Tails, and then Naruto's like, Sasuke, turn off your fire! We, we don't want to kill the Nine Tail Beasts! And Sasuke says, no, let them burn. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna, whatever, I'm gonna, or... I'm gonna change this system or whatever. And then he says something like, "That's really hinting at, at the end goal that he has," but we never get to see it before it happens. Or whenever uh, Sasuke blocked Obito's attack to Naruto, and he's like, "No, like you're not gonna be the one that cuts, that erases the path. That's gonna be me." Oh and yeah, you see, like, like, the, the, uh, the, the Jubito attack, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, I was like, oh crap, like, bro, like, what is going on? That's what I'm saying. Like, I never knew where Sasuke was at. But then you see, like, but, or, or uh, the scene where um, even Naruto is about to give up on fighting Jubito whenever he has a divine tree sucking up everybody. Uh-huh. And, um, and even Naruto is about to give up, and Sasuke is like, are you throwing in the towel? Because I'm not. And, like, after Naruto gets his second win back, he goes to to meet up with Sasuke. He's like, no, I'm going too. And you see a smile on Sasuke's face. He's like, bro, like, you know he's psyched. So it's like one of those things where <laughs> you, never know, you never know where he's where he's at. You know, you never know if he's like, if he's on the good side or if he's not, or if he's got something out of his agenda plan, or if he's, I don't know. So and, I know a lot of people are indecisive, but. And there's also that scene when uh, they finally hit Jubito with that combo attack. And then um, Sakura and Hinata are like, "What's happening? What's happening?" And then Hinata says, yeah. "Oh, they're smiling. It's it's yeah. really cool." Okay, you donated five dollars. Just got back. Had to leave, but then I miss. We're talking about um, Naruto-related stuff. You know, Nagato's abilities now Sasuke. But thanks for the donation, so, man. Eduardo did that. Or was that Eduardo? Or is that somebody else? Or is that someone else donated oh, yeah. eleven dollars to you? Thank you very much. I want to all you guys for the supports. Sure he- yeah, I want to make sure he got your your shout out too. Um, someone said I really like your rewrite series. Your your rewrite series is actually pretty dope, dog. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, um, I'm not so great at st- uh, storytelling myself, so it's it's pretty cool that you can rewrite your own, like rewrite the series in your own way. Yeah, some people um say it's like, oh, what's the point of doing it? But like, I mean, I just I just enjoy it, you know. Um, I, mean, I mean, why not? I mean, because there are. Th- things with hindsight that could have been done better in the series and well, like yeah well because well, like well, I was like, it's no different than people who do what if scenarios you know it's yeah it's, yeah and I'll, pretty much I mean, a lot of people love a lot of people love the what if scenarios i'm like bro it's the same thing pretty much yeah like it's just that i'm i'm doing this in a more in a longer format with a with more of a story in mind and a structure behind it i mean you might as well because i mean if you think about it that's what like it's what it's all about it's it, it, it gets people coming back for more. It's like it's like reading a book. It's so mm-hmm. different, you know. I mean, I mean honestly, because I mean, because there ain't no way I'm gonna finish a, a whole. Well, I guess if I got time that day, I'll finish a book, depending on how long it is in one day. But usually, when I read a book, I don't finish it in one day. So obviously, I'm gonna keep coming back to, to yeah, read yeah. it. It's the same, yeah. same thing with these videos. So, um, 
And some, some like Even some Naruto what ifs are, are very interesting too. Like, and it's it's nice to have that. Well, it would have been interesting if that happened. Let's let's analyze this particular instance of the story. If things had gone differently, it can be uh, very compelling for a video honestly, or for anything. I see a lot of a uh, popular what if scenario is like that everybody seems to do. I think I myself, I think I, I might have to look again. But I think I might have. Th I think I thought about doing it. But is the what if Minato never died kind of scenario? Mm -hmm. I, that one's a very popular one, and uh, even though there's already a filler, that one I will say that like that filler arc, the whole uh, Tsunade's dream inside the Infinite Tsukuyomi arc, where oh, is like, that the, the one end... Sasuke goes to the police? Uh, yeah. Okay. Like that one, I'm indecisive about. Like I don't. I don't I like care the about it. Of, I don't really like, I like it. The, I like the premise for it i like the beginning of it it's actually not bad but then as it goes on it gets kind of like okay now you're just kind of like you're kind of milking this thing it seems contrived and yeah like, they, I, like I like the premise they wank sorcery so hard in that arc like sorcery they really is, do it's insane I, I, I remember thinking that too i saw like the freaking dead kage i'm like what no I ain't no way he's killing all three <laughs> yeah I, I was like okay <laughs> all right I, I think I'm pretty sure I actually turned my my vision off on that like figuratively speaking I was like I was like all right there ain't no way that happened but all right, we'll just go we'll roll with it but I like the premise for it I like the premise that like the idea of Minato still alive Itachi not having to deal with the Uchiha Kudeta and Sasuke remaining in the village but then I was like as it kept going I was like bro they're really just like of course Sasuke's gonna get pissed off but for a different reason this time, and it seems like a more petty reason to get pissed off. Just because Why would he get pissed? I, I don't remember exactly. Dancing. Well, it's just because like because Minato's there, like both Minato and Jiraiya are constantly helping Naruto train, so Naruto's obviously progressing getting, much further. Oh, uh, he's than, getting stronger than Sasuke, that's why he goes rogue. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I'm like, bro, like and Sasuke's getting like morally pissed off to the extent that he's about to kill somebody i'm like bro it is not that serious like you're still one of the strongest no, yeah Genie. like in the original there was that aspect to it that naruto was getting stronger and then Sasuke was, but it's because he was um, realizing i'm not gonna kill itachi like uh it's a problem yeah. like this guy is evolving so fast that i'm i'm just stuck that's that's the, that was the problem it was because of itachi not because you know, he just wanted to be stronger than Naruto because he wouldn't have left the yeah. village and, and try to kill Naruto if that was the case. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Like, it, in, the, in the original, it's, it's believable. I mean, I mean, not only that, but you spend more time delving into how Sasuke feels about Itachi and then subsequently about how he feels about Naruto. Like, at first, he treats Naruto like he's, like, not really that, that interesting, even though he has, like, sympathy for Naruto because of, like, how their backgrounds are. But you can tell that... At first, Sasuke doesn't think too much of Naruto until the actually till the tree climbing exercise, mm -hmm. and even Sasuke is looking like, bro, he's catching up to me. Like, what is going on here? And so, that's when you see the rivalry start to really, you know, come to come to a head. And and then, like you said, once Naruto starts to really leave Sasuke in the dust, and Sasuke is like, bro, like, yeah, he, how am I going to? That happens like, when he sees Gabumta for the first time. He like Sasuke's like, what? the hell is happening yeah, here? Like, what, is, like, what, kind of a, what kind of a fight is this? And then, he, and then not only that, bro, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm pretty sure I had the same face Sasuke did whenever I first saw... Because I, I did watch the anime, at least the part one of Naruto. I watched the anime first before I read the manga, and I, I remember watching it mm -hmm. whenever Naruto yeah, did too. the combined... When, whenever he did the combined transformation to the Nine Tails, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I had the same face Sasuke did. I, I lost my mind. Because I thought that was like one of the most goaded moments. Because I actually thought for a second they did he just summon the entire Nine Tails, but then I thought about it, I was like, no, it's just a transformation. But yeah, but it's really cool, like the way they do it. And that's the thing with, with all, what if scenarios. Sometimes you can, you know, go overboard or do some stuff that doesn't really make much sense. But yeah, um, like I don't know if you if you're caught up to my rewrites, but uh a character that really changed was hinata like hinata is very different in the rewrites and also another very um controversial episode was when sasuke fought naruto in the tenchi bridge which i i, I don't like the tenchi bridge arc very much so i, I really changed how the arc worked and some you people are not gonna like that Kage no no the tenchi bridge like the the arc where um sasuke saw yamato and sakura go after 
or Uchimaru in the bridge. Oh, okay, that's right, that's right. Like, uh, that's right. They actually, uh, Sasuke dead. actually fights um, Naruto in that arc in in the rewrites. And people say, "Oh, you, you made Sasuke too powerful," and I'm like, "Did I?" Because he was already. Like, I would argue he was already Kage level by the time. Yeah. Came around. Um, like, I, I gave him a couple of more stuff. Like I gave him basic elemental jutsus from every tr nature transformation because he copied those with his showering gun. say over yeah, the I would, years. I would imagine. Yeah, I would imagine that be the case. And, and I, I, I can't see people arguing that I gave Sasuke more chakra, but other than that, um, I think it was a pretty believable fight. For the I mean, part. he lasted a good bit against Datura and Itachi. So I mean, yeah, I he mean, beat Datura. Right. And also, I definitely, I definitely buffed the curse mark because I think the curse mark is a cool amp. And in Arthur, she put in the curse mark became just like a, you know, I'll use it in here or there to fly, and that's it. It has no no impact. Well, like, unless I'm wrong, the curse mark is pretty much essentially a what you call it incomplete sage mode kind of thing. Like yeah, it is it is nature chakra, but yeah, um, like, it, it doesn't it like. It's like it's just a flat oh, buff, right? It's it's a, like a flat buff. Um, it ma it yeah. makes uh, the part one characters seem so much more powerful because they're so much weaker. But then when you get to Naruto Shippuden, um, when Sasuke is like godlike, he used yeah. the curse mark and the flat buff doesn't even propel him into that level again. Like he's just a well, little it, slightly better. But in the rewrite, I, I made the curse mark much more powerful for well, Sasuke. As it should be, because I mean, in, in my opinion, like even Jiraiya's incomplete sage mode was enough to like like really give him a, a, a the help he needed against pain. I mean, he still oh, yeah. lost, but yeah. like the, the point is, is like even incomplete sage mode is still nothing to sniff at. So I feel like the curse mark should be at the very least relative, you know, to something like that. So, um, so I I agree. The curse mark should be. I think the curse mark's definitely slept on. I think like I don't think it should be as powerful as even the incomplete sage mode, but I think it should give the character. Um, you know, an amp that you can actually see, okay, he's more powerful now. It's not just like he can fly or, or, or whatever, or he gets yeah. like a little, you know, chakra boost to make, to, to produce another jutsu. It's like Sasuke yeah. was in, in Naruto Shippuden. I, uh, when I'm one of the things, like, talking about someone, get, people getting on to you about the level of chakra that Sasuke has, I'm like, I mean, that fight between Daedara and him lasted for a long time. And Sasuke was expelling a lot of chakra, so I mean, and and actually Sasuke the... wasn't even out of chakra when the fight ended. That's a misconception. Like he looks tired and hurt because he was tired and hurt because he chidoried himself so that yeah. um, he would diffuse the nano explosives. But he yeah. was still uh, he still had his shower gun activated um, in the end of the fight, and he still has chakra to use to to summon Manda and control him with a genjutsu. And then um, he survives the fight. But if he yeah. if he was out of chakra, Orochimaru would have come out just like in the fight against Itachi. Yeah, I seem to forget I, I, that. Yeah, I agree. And as I said, I don't. I, I'm just kind of surprised that Orochimaru didn't try to whistle his way out of that fight to begin with, <laughs> especially if he was still alive. But I guess he wanted to save himself for Itachi. But. Um, yeah, I, I I agree. I think it's really weird that the the curse mark gets a slight nerf the way it does because it doesn't seem as powerful. Like like you said, it seems more powerful in part one than it does in part two, and I don't really understand why. But I mean, I, I mean it's, it's because it's it's like a it's like a flat buff, right? So you get like a plus ten to strength when you have five in strength, it's gonna feel like you're twice as powerful. But if you get a mm. plus 10 when you have a 100, then it's going to just feel like you're, oh, I'm a little bit more powerful, but it doesn't really make that much difference. Um, someone, asked, someone asked you, would Sasuke keep the curse mark in the rewrite? Oh, uh, will he? Perhaps. Perhaps I don't want to spoil too much. True. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> yeah, don't want to give too Someone said the arc is basically just the can I copy your homework meme. <laughs> I think he's talking about the, uh, I think he might be talking about the filler art that we were talking about. about oh, yeah, yeah. The... It's just, just change it a little bit so it doesn't feel like... <laughs> Sasuke's uh, CM2 is so swag. It really is. Sasuke's curse mark was 
awesome yeah. when it first when I first saw it. I, I also like, like Casey um Curse Mark One is also really cool. Like um a lot of people talk about the second stage, but the first stage is also great. Like everything about the Curse Mark looks great. I remember I remember uh playing the games uh like the the PS2 games mm -hmm. and Curse Mark One was like the form you needed to get, you know, or you wanted to get. And I remember just like literally getting Sasuke just to use the first curse mark stage <laughs> um, so I, it, it, looked, it looked sick it really was sick and by the way guys if you haven't already subscribe to lightning snow's channel the links in the description below there's going to be a video tomorrow um where we debate or what well, we talk about really um Madara versus obito in his channel so go subscribe to his channel right now it takes two seconds uh, Please, let's, let's see I if we <laughs> let's see how many subscribers gonna get after this live stream. Uh oh, I mean, I, I'm I'm grateful for the subscribers I have right now. I mean, I I you know as long as there's people watching it, hey, I'm 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 happy to keep doing videos. And I I might start doing like like actual what if scenarios because I'm titling my I'm titling my videos differently instead of just like this person versus this person because I don't think. It seems like, like I said earlier, people will like literally do like what is scenarios. So I think the way I'm going to title them from now on is like, what if this person fought this person instead of, you know, just more of a narrative you know, behind it than, yeah. than just the like, is this character stronger than this character? I think it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think so, those are said, more interesting, to be honest. I, I do too. Like, I think it's just a, I just, I'm, I'm hitting myself now for not thinking about it beforehand because narrative spins are. Like I said, more interesting to, to go off of than a hypothetical, you know, let's put them in a, you know, isolated place where they just have this ability and this ability. And no, it, it makes it better to put twist on it. Like we, like we, use, like I'm not gonna give too much away in the video, but we, we did it narratively. And like, there was a lot of factors, although we did take one aspect out of it that yeah. we had to in order yeah. to make it fair, but yeah. yeah. yeah still, um, uh, I think it was interesting. Say the least. I want to ask which versions of Madara and Obito. Wait, well, I don't know if I want to give that away or not. <laughs> I, which I mean, ones you'll do see you tomorrow. think? <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll see. You have to subscribe to Slightly Snow's channel to to see the versions. Yeah, true, true, true. The cursed mark Donzo put on Sasuke was cool too. Yeah, it was cool. Um, I think Donzo versus Sasuke is an underrated fight because that fight was great. I will definitely give you that. I think it is very underrated. Um, I I, I say that, but I'll be honest. It's not one of my top five. It's probably in my top ten, but not my top five. But no, I, I think that's fair. I think I, that's fair. But um, people don't seem to give that fight enough credit. They don't. It's a it's a lot of plot twist in the fight itself. So it's like it keeps you guessing. It, like it gives you it keeps you on the edge of your seat, wondering who's got the actual upper hand and, and what's gonna happen. Oh, we actually um, get Sasuke, you know, with a, a decent strategic level because. Um, and the war arc, he begins to get dumber and dumber. Um, yeah, that is true. Well, his, his abilities start to get overshadowed by Naruto's a lot, unfortunately. Like, well, I don't mean to say that in the way of, like, I don't want Naruto to be hyped either, but Sasuke is the second main character, so he kind of needs to get some hype around him, too. And he, uh, his, his abilities get overshadowed by Naruto's real fast. Yeah, um, the, the problem, I think, um, it's not even that he gets overshadowed, because I think for the most part they're still relative. It's just, um, when Naruto gets KCM, um, to plus Sage, when he's able to combine those things, Sasuke doesn't get, uh, an amp in that situation, and this is, this kind of breaks the entire, um, tradition of the franchise, that when Naruto gets an amp, Sasuke gets an amp, vice versa, like, they're always, yeah. uh, getting amps at the exact same time, and that's the only time Naruto gets an amp and Sasuke doesn't, so Sasuke has to rely on Jugo to use his curse mark on his Susano so that he can actually fight Jubito. Which, uh, it's not that interesting for me. <laughs> well, and, the, and like that's what makes the first fight in uh, part one between, well, not the first fight, but the foul of the end in part one, that fight between Naruto and Sasuke, that's what makes it so great because it was oh, a yeah. constant back and, back and forth. Like one per, at one point Naruto had the upper hand, then Sasuke had the upper hand, Naruto, then back to Sasuke, and then they were pretty much even with Sasuke being, you know. Curse Mark 2 the, versus yeah. um, the QB chakra mode. I'm not yeah. QB Chakra mode, but like the QB Cloak. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like, and that, like... fight's, that fight's probably my favorite fight in the series. 
It's so good. Uh, I wouldn't even. Uh, I still wouldn't think that's on my top five, but it's definitely on my top ten for sure. Like, what's your I, favorite toy? Uh, you're probably gonna think it's. You're probably gonna like not be surprised, but it's definitely Kakashi versus Obito. Because the thing is that fight's much better than the anime. It's one of the one of the, the exceptions where the anime well, did a much better job than the manga. Well, biased opinion aside, because obviously Kakashi's my favorite character, but like the reason I think it's so great is because I think it's the epitome of what Naruto was started as. Because um, if I mean, when you when you get when you get to the war, you get all these like giants, like world ending like attacks um, that are launched like left and right. But then you have fights like this where it's, you know, on the ground, 1v1, hand to hand, small ninjutsu. But it, it's kind of what we started watching Naruto for, you know, at the beginning. And I mean, to be kind of... fair, um, the first, the first, you know, chapter slash episode starts with a, a massive nine tail fox that can destroy mountains and cause tsunamis yeah, just by wearing its tails. But I, I see what you mean. Like it's a more grounded fight, which is a good, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's a good way to diversify at least amidst the, the chaotic nature of the war arc. Well, the thing is, like, it, even though it's on the ground and it's not as like large scale as the fight that's going on outside of the yeah. Kamui dimension, it still leaves you on the edge of your seat the entire time you watch it like, for the first time. Like you're just. Again, that's like Naruto Sasuke, like at one point Obito has the advantage, and the point Kakashi got the advantage, and it's just a constant back and forth, and it leaves you on the edge of your seat, just wondering who's going to come out on top. So, I, it just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's what I started watching Naruto for, and I think that's probably the reason why, um, or that's half the reason why it's did you favorite. Did you read that in, in the manga? I did, yeah. I was a little bit, I mean, it was still a good fight in the manga. It's but still, I, it still has the same, like, beats. But it's definitely mm -hmm. not a, as high octane. Um, like the best panel is definitely the last one when Kakashi and Obito hit themselves at the same time. Uh, um, well, and, and there's also like the, the back and forth between the flashback and the fight in the present. Uh, mm -hmm. It's definitely, they, they put a lot of effort into the fight in the anime to make it stand out. Well, the, the best part that was like so clean in that fight was when uh, Kakashi kicked the, Kamu, the kunai into over to his face oh yeah like yeah in mid -air. i'm like bro that is clean <laughs> and it cuts like um, his cheek and then his cheek um uh, regenerates with the up, hashirama yeah. cells and like yeah, yeah that quite, that, like and also one thing that there wasn't in the manga that i think was the most interesting part of the fight at least strategically speaking is when obito uses the fireball then kakashi uses the mud wall and then it explodes like and then obito uses that parachute kunai thing that Shikamari used in part one Kimari, against Timari. Yeah. And, and then he comes from the other side, kicks Kakashi, then the Kakashi comes from, from the underground. And it was actually yes. a clone. Like that that's like that's really ninja. Like layered I'm saying, strategy. I'm saying, like, it's on the fly kind of tactics, and you just as like I said, it leaves you on the edge of your seat because like I, I don't know, I could go on and on and on about it. But then like that's why I am not gonna lie, that's kinda what I hoped that the last fight between Naruto and Sasuke was going to be. And I granted it was in the beginning. Like there was some hand to hand small ninjutsu, but I was hoping for a little more of that until. Actually, that part's I knew... also anime only. Um, uh, the, the part where, where Naruto and Sasuke are just like exchanging blows in, in their normal forms. Like, and Sasuke kind of uses a bunch of tanning with a Matarasu. So that's, that's anime only. Um, yeah, because so, the like, manga they they clash one time and then they already like Susano QB chakra yeah, mode stuff. And I remember re I remember watching the anime too. I was like, man, like it, it was hard for me to get excited about the fight because I knew how it was gonna develop into the big avatars, which is fine. But again, I love the on the ground, on uh, you know one v one, hand to hand in jutsu aspect but of it. The thing is, um, it's like it's like this fight between Naruto and Sasuke is a mirror to their first fight in the Valley of the End because, um, at least in the manga, because in the manga they start already blasting everything, like using their most powerful ability. They have nowhere to go, essentially. Yeah. They're already at the peak of their power, except for Sasuke who trains the Tail Beast and gets more powerful there. But, um, and then they get weaker because they drain everything, like they use all their chakra and then they have to have that very gruesome fight on the ground that's mm. just like 
them punching each other because they have nothing more. And and in, in in the first fight, they're like getting progressively stronger until like the upper limits of the characters. I think it's interesting. I, I like that it works in a different flow in the first yeah. fight. I, I agree. I, I, I agree that what you were talking about because it's like that's what they did that for is to get them to that point at the end where they're just on the ground. They got nothing left but their fist. And so like, which is great. You know, I love that. I love that whole like exchange they had. So I get what you're, I get what that was. Coming. I just, I don't know, because at the beginning part of that anime fight, ex that ex anime exclusive fight, I was again on pins and needles. Like everything was going, you know, because I remember like, I remember seeing Naruto try to get off a shadow clone jutsu, and Sasuke's like not letting him because he knows mm -hmm. like once he gets it off, he's like, oh, I'm gonna be in trouble. So like, I love that, and Naruto's like scrambling trying to figure out like. You know, try to get an opening where he can use it, but Sasuke is just not letting him because he's just that quick. And again, that's the same. I love, I love fights like that, or like the, the, the whole fight between uh, Team Asuma with Kakashi against uh, Kakuzu and Hidon. Like that, that whole fight had me on pins and needles because of how crazy it was on the ground. You know, I mean, it wasn't a whole big explosions or whatnot. So. Uh, I think that's what I started watching Naruto for, and so once they got to the big, you know, Avatar, Wood Golem, Susano thing, it was cool. Don't get me wrong; it still is to this day. Like I still love that kind of stuff. But you know, the ninjas on the ground was what I began watching Naruto, for. and that might be the reason why I'm not a hundred percent invested in Naruto, uh, in Boruto because of stuff like that still happening, even though. The fight between Momoshiki, Naruto, and Sasuke is still one of the best fights to me in the series because of all the on the ground, hand to hand ninjutsu fight they were doing. Like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's the I best. It's definitely the best animated fight in the series. Um, I mean, I I like the animation there, but I don't like the fight because there is I'm not invested in Momoshiki or, or even Naruto and Sasuke in that situation. I think it's very contrived, and also the way it ends with Boruto winning the fight. It's like imagine was, yeah. imagine if if Jubidara was fighting against Naruto and Sasuke and um, they actually they bring Konohamaru you know yeah. twelve year old Konohamaru and he wins the fight for them in the end that that would be so stupid. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. Like, and that's what I, the the fight cut, for me the fight cuts off whenever uh, Sasuke uses Chibaku Tensei against Momoshiki. Like that's where the fight ends for me. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, honestly, because. And like I said, like the choreography in that fight was wild, and they brought back that whole um, uh, transforming Naruto into a Ross and Shuriken thing. That was crazy. And then no, yeah, that was really like it, it's so it, it's so jarring when you read the manga fight because the Boruto action scenes in the manga are absolutely horrible. Yeah, um, they're so bad. Like. Kimoto cannot draw fight scenes well, uh, and if you compare him to Kishimoto, then it's it's kind of a joke. But then they improve that fight so much in in the anime; it's crazy. It really is. And then I, I do like the the fight between Naruto, and Sasuke, and uh, Ishiki. Or was it, was it Ish Ishiki or? Uh... I mean, they fought against no. Ishiki and Jigen after that. Jigen, that's right. It was yeah, that's right. Um, I couldn't remember specifically. I can't remember specifically who it was, but yeah, it was Jigen specifically, wasn't it? Um, which one? Because they put against both of them, so... Well, when the, uh, the one that they lost, the first one. Not with the Barry and Moe. Jigen, Jigen, um, yeah, Jigen. Jigen, yeah. Okay. Oh, Kane just that became a good. member of the channel. Thank you so much, Kane, for your support. Uh, that fight with uh, Jigen was amazing. I, I hate that loss, but that choreography was actually pretty good. Like I haven't seen the manga, the, the anime fight. Like, I have seen some clips and mm -hmm. stuff, but I, I wasn't too bothered watch it. I mean, well, yeah, well, I mean, obviously Naruto and Sasuke got curb stomped. I mean, way, yeah, but... it's it's just kind of dumb, because, um, like, I, I tend to think about fights in a quote-unquote realistic way, not, not realistic in terms of the real world, but, um, very similitude is important, because you need things to make sense within the universe, and then Jigen comes in, and he kicks Sasuke Susano. And he destroys the Susano, and then he hits Sasuke, and Sasuke flies away. Okay, so he's powerful enough to just break the Susano apart. Yeah. But then he fights against Sasuke and, and punches and kicks Sasuke several times, and Sasuke is like fine. So 
Sasuke is way more durable than his own Susano, meaning that he shouldn't even try to use the Susano in the first place because it won't help him, it will just spend his chakra. So I'm like, yeah, he should have thought this through a little bit better, I think. Like if if Jigen had like a ability like Kamui where he could face through the Susano and then kick Sasuke out, I could see that. But then he, for him just kicking the Susano in general, I don't know, that was very jarring to say the very least. I like think it's, it was very con it's one of those moments meant to say this character is so much more powerful, he can kick the Susano open. Which there's precedent for that, like Tsunade was breaking Madara Susanos. Like she wasn't kicking him through the Susano or anything like that. The Raikage also did that. But yeah. we see that those attacks, they would have done even more damage to Madara himself if they had hit Madara directly. Because otherwise, yeah. Madara wouldn't have to use the Susano. Yeah, the that's true. Attacks. I mean, that is true. I mean, because I mean, Sonata left a big hole in his chest. So, yeah, I mean, exactly. It was, it was reanimated, but still, like, if that was the real Madara, he probably would have died. Yeah. Like, um, like, yeah, if he, if he took a punch straight on from Tsunade, like, amped by the 100 healings and stuff, he probably would have died. Um, like, and that's one thing I will say that I feel like it slept on is Tsunade's strength, because Tsunade's punches are no joke. <laughs> they, uh, yeah. they hit. Like, so, I, I think, I'll be honest with you, I, I think Tsunade is one of my top 10 favorite characters. I think she's very, I think she, along with a lot of people, got the the power creep uh, in a bad way. I think she got like left in the dust because of how the power scaling was. Because she was, granted, she was part behind a desk because she's the Hokage, but I feel like she, she could have benefited a lot more from some screen time. Yeah, because um, the first arc, you know, the search for Tsunade arc is really good. People don't give that arc enough credit, um, but Tsunade, Tsunade's character in that arc is great. Like, it's it's very mature for a shonen character, uh, the way they treat well, her character in that arc. Well, it's funny that you say that because I did a video a long time ago about that arc and about how when I first watched it as a kid, I didn't... It was actually my least favorite arc. I'll be honest with you, even as Shippuden came around, that was still my least favorite arc because there was as much action going on. But as I got older, I was like, bro, like this stuff is like heavy. Like yeah. the, the tropes that it presents in the arc is heavy with like Orochimaru giving her the ultimatum of bringing her, her dead loved ones back to life. Even, even with his reanimation, because you know in your mind that the, if he's talking about the way that- yeah, they're not gonna be the same, like, like it's gonna be, it's gonna be weird. Yeah, so like, but she still like wanted to do that. So it's like, it's a very human sympathetic moment for her. As you, as you, like, as you get older, you realize like, bro, like, what would I do in that situation? Yeah. Like, you know, would I sacrifice the entire village for just, just, just this chance to see two people that I failed in my life? But bro, that's heavy stuff. So, um, and also I think the so anime, um, they kind of tank the pacing of their arc because they overdo some scenes with Naruto training the Rasengan and they just stretch things out too much to, you know, make the arc longer because it's the anime they cannot catch up to the manga. Um, but the, the arc's well paced in the manga. Like, um... And it's a good training arc. Yeah, like it, it is. It, aside from maybe... No, I was gonna say it. No, I was gonna say it. It's better than... I think the training arc itself and the way how it's presented is better than the Ross and Shuriken training. I mean, there are there are moments in the Ross and Shuriken training that I like better in the the regular wrestling on training arc, but I, I, for the most part, I think the, the one with Jiraiya is the superior because of how it's paced. And the um, payoff is better too. Like Naruto hitting oh, the Rasengan sure. is one of the best scenes, like on Kabuto. Sure. It's one of the best scenes in the series. It's much better than Naruto hitting the Ross and Shuriken on Koxu. For uh, sure. Like, well, in the moment that I was gonna say that I think it's that puts the Ross and Shuriken training sort of, uh, you know, above or, or close to above um, the regular Ross and Shuriken is because that scene where uh, Naruto is just like not sure if he can, because he saw that Kakashi did the Rasengan or whatever, and he's like, well, maybe I'm not as like, you know, maybe I'm not as great as I, or maybe this Jutsu isn't going to be as great as I think it is or whatever, or maybe I won't be able to get this done at all and Kikashi's like do you understand like why I just did all that and why I'm telling you all this and he's like why he's like 
because I believe you're the only Shinobi who can surpass the fourth Okage. And I was like, bro, that is like, I got chills during that scene. Yeah. So like stuff and, like that. And the scene when um, Naruto uses the wind style Rasengan and clashes with Kakashi's normal Rasengan. Yeah. And then Kakashi, when his hand like blows up and he looks back and he sees Minato's like outline um, and Naruto back. It's really good. I like when they do that. Yeah, like some moments like that, I think put it close to above the normal Rasengan training, but I still like the Rasengan training better because of how, again, how it's paced. And like you said, the payoff is a lot better. Like, don't get me wrong, the Rasengan training get payoff is pretty cool too, but I think the Rasengan is like the epitome of yeah. how you train. You know what I'm saying? I just, I, I like Kishibaru really rushed the Naruto versus Kakuzu fight. Um, and it's because the, the editors were telling him you have to finish this arc quickly. So Kakuzu just looks like an absolute wimp. Joke. Like, yeah. he's, he, Naruto had, he needs three Shadow Clones to fool Kakuzu twice. <laughs> and, I think, well, Kakuzu is my favorite Akatsuki member. Really? And I think, he, yeah, he, oh, because he's, he just looks cool. Like, I'm not gonna lie, he's, he's got a cool design, I feel like, and he's kind of stoic and, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I, I don't I guess, dislike I, him. I just think the way he dies is bad. It is. Like, yeah, he got done dirty. Yeah. Uh, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can agree with you there. I think when he starts, like, really bragging on himself is when I start, you know, getting a little bit annoyed. Like, it kind of turns me off a little bit. But at the same time, I think I think, I think the beginning era of Kakuzu, when he wasn't really talking as much, was kind of cool. Um, oh, yeah. And also the fight against Kakashi was cool too, and Team Master. Yeah. Oh, like, oh my god. Okay, so it's funny. You don't... Okay, do you play any of the Naruto games, like, currently? Um, I play Storm from time to time. Okay, so I play both Storm, and I just got back into doing Shinobi Striker too. Um, granted, I don't play Shinobi Strikers as much, because I don't think it's as fun, but... Um, whenever I'm up, to, up against somebody who's, like, really tough, or I'm in a match that's like really hard, uh, Shelby Striker or Storm 4, and I barely win with like a Kamui or or whatever with like 10% of my health. I literally equate it to that fight and between Kakuzu and Kakashi because it's like Kakashi was literally pulling that fight out of his butt. Like he was literally just on edge the entire time. Yeah, I, I, he was I get close to somebody and I almost died. I'm like, bro, this is how Kakashi must have felt. And, and like, Kashi, he would have to use the Bangekyo if Naruto hadn't arrived with Yamato and the team there. Which and then crazy. Naruto arrives and then he just... Cox loses 50 IQ points, apparently. <laughs> I think, it, I mean, when we put it that way, I think that it would have been better if, like... Kakuzu wouldn't have looked more like a joke if Kakashi had been the one to kill him with Kamui. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like Kakazu wouldn't really know what's happening. Yep. I think he'd be caught off uh -huh. guard. And, sure. And, Even though Kakashi and, never really kills anyone with Kamui, it, it, I think it, it's safe to have a headcanon assumption that Kamui doesn't work as well on living things. Because um, Kakashi only used that against Datara, and it takes a long time for, for him to even snap his arm out. Do you think that Kakashi would have been able to Kamui the fire and Kakazu at the same time? I think not, because like, he usually Kamui's one target at a time. He'd have to Kamui the fire first so they don't die. And then he'll probably see what he has to do to, uh, to Kamui Kakazu. But then again, he, I think if he could have Kamui people's heads off, he would have done that more often than uh, like just trying it once against Dater and missing and then never doing it again. What do you guys think, dude? Like, because I made this joke a long time ago. It's like, I think the biggest nerf in the series is Kakashi. Because what if he had, like, the chakra reserve of someone like, I don't want to say Naruto, I'm, 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 or like Minato. Like, say if he had the chakra reserve of someone like Minato, who I think Minato has. It seems Minato never really runs out of chakra, so it seems like he's got a, pre, pre, uh, a good supply of it. So imagine yeah. Kakashi with the, uh, you know, with the reserve, a chakra reserve of Minato. He'd be spamming Kamui, and he would end the series relatively quickly, like or at least up to a certain point. He probably until he gets blind. <laughs> well, that too, yeah. Well, I, well, I'm saying like in the context of like, let's say he used it 
on everybody up until like pain because i think pain starts to get gets to that level of like insane like he can't just combo people and it'd be a complete win mm -hmm. so like he'd be able to combo with orochimaru combo with, uh kakazu datara sasori like he would have won that all those fights and it's just like i the series would be named kakashi for sure so um so it, it and not only that, like if we even if we take Kamui out of the equation, like imagine Kakashi with the the chakra reserve of Minato with all the jutsu that he knows. I mean, He'd be yeah. Insane. I just I like Kakashi not having as much chakra because he feels more vulnerable. It's it's like whenever Kakashi's fighting, you're always like, oh man, he's gonna run out of chakra. Bad things are gonna happen. You're always tense when Kakashi's going to fight. Like I agree. Someone strong. Like you're like, oh man, he doesn't have much chakra. What's he gonna do? And when you think about it, that's what makes Kakashi even better because, like, you know... You feel that the Sharingan is not something that's his, right? You feel as, like, yeah, yeah this is something he's borrowing. Or when he or when he gets the quote-unquote win, because I know he doesn't really win most of the fights that he participates in, but when he pulls off... Like, the perform when he performs pretty well, despite the fact that he is very limited, it makes you respect him more because of how well he's doing with his restrictions. I mean, to be fair, he doesn't really have that many fights to begin with in the series. No, like, but like, like, like he like, beats Abuza like, like, twice uh, in part yeah. one, and then he doesn't really fight anymore. I mean, I guess he had help in the first one from Naruto and Sasuke. Um, or like, or, or like, I've been like against Kagazu, like you, like you, you feel that he's like on edge the entire time. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You respect how well he's doing despite the odds that he's up against, and and you can see, you can see like he is doing the math so that he saves as much chakra as he can he's not he's never spamming jutsus like yeah. like a maniac like naruto is all the time because naruto doesn't have to care about chakra essentially yeah oh and usually kashi's like protecting other people while he's because he's literally protecting choji and Ino the entire yeah. time during fight too so he's not only saving himself and fighting kakazu but he's also looking after two other who should be competent tuning, but they're really not. So I, I don't know. I, like you had to think that Kishimoto had to nerf Kakashi something fierce, mm -hmm. otherwise he'd just be he'd be insane. Yeah, in the the Kakuzu fight, um, the way it ends, like I really changed that in the rewrite too. Like in in the rewrite, everyone fights against Kakuzu when they arrive, and like which is how it should be. Everyone is is working. So that um, Naruto can hit the Rasa Shuriken on Kakuzu. I mean, I mean, really, the only people who did anything in that fight was Kakashi, Shikamaru, and Naruto. That is it. I mean, yeah, and then when Naruto Na arrives, he does everything by himself with four Shadow Clones, which is kind of stupid. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Even Yamato didn't even do anything. Which, I mean, granted, there wasn't much he could have done. He used because... Wood Style one time, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. I think Yamato got a big nerf too. I like a lot. I was a little disappointed about how his character went throughout the series as well. It's just like he um, never gets screen time, to be honest. Like he's just there to the, seal the nine tails as if something happens, but never really impacts the story that much. I was like, he's in there. He's in the. He's in ten percent of the Ninja War, and that's it. But even less <laughs> that than that, it. I think. Like yeah. I, I thought it was like, and I would have thought it would be really cool to see Hashirama, like, see Yamato. Like, oh, hey, there's someone else that can use what style. Like, could be interesting. I thought it would have been pretty, I have been pretty cool if, like, I, if we saw like, a combined attack between uh, Hashirama and Yamato. Like, obviously, Hashirama is going to be way superior, but it still would have been cool to see Yamato and Hashirama maybe fight side by side for a second. Um, but, yeah, like, I, and, like I, I, I remember. Even, even before the war, he didn't do much after the Tenchi Bridge arc. Um, in the Kakusu yeah, arc, he, he uses one jutsu, he's just standing there. I mean, he also used the water style combining with uh, with Naruto's Rasengan to stop that the fire, cool. which was pretty cool, but then, like, he was just a, a minor side character in that arc. And he also trained yeah. Naruto, which I suppose is something. Um, but then after yeah. that, um, he goes in the Sasuke Itachi pursuit mission, and he doesn't even use a wood style jutsu, I think, in that arc. Yeah. Does nothing I mean, again. Gets, and in the pain arc, he gets, he's outside the village. So. Well, I feel like he's he gets more screen time in Kakashi's 
backstory arc than he does in the rest of the series, yeah. the actual main series. Yeah, so, <laughs> I, I just feel like he's very really stuck on it, and the idea of him is pretty cool. Like someone who could actually use West Dial, you know, I felt like he had been, and apparently he's like, I, I guess he's considered relative to Kakashi. So I thought that the idea of him kind of being around a little more was actually interesting, but it, I mean, yeah, nothing. never really happens. So, I, I, I don't think. Yamato is that interesting, like his personality is kind of boring to me, and character-wise, like he's just kind of bland, but you could have done more with him, like he could have developed uh, in more interesting ways and just like nothing at all. That's what's, uh, I agree that he's, he is bland, and that's, that's why I'm disappointed, is like I feel like there could have been so much that could have been done with him, but I don't know. I... It becomes the Naruto and Sasuke show. Well, I guess. Same thing with Sai, too. Like, he's introduced in the same arc as Yamato. Mm -hmm. And he has some, you know, moments in that arc. And then he disappears again from the series. And the only other moment he has a bit of development is when he stops Kaori from beating up Naruto, and that's it. Like, yeah, then Sai's that done his... as a character. Like, <laughs> And then that moment with him and his brother in the war, which. Yeah, I mean, like, who cares right. about the brother, too? Like, yeah. yeah. Well, I say, we would have been invested if Sai had been developed better. And you know more, what I'm like, we yeah, and had a little bit more screen time, maybe. Because the yeah. thing is, um, there's this shonen trope that unimportant characters never have a one on one fight in the series. Like, and, and Sai and Yamato never get a fight for themselves. Or a fight where they're the protagonist of the fight, at least. They're always in the background. Um, being like a support role and not really being that important and this it, is it does suck it, it's important f if you want to establish a character as important he should have a you know a moment uh, in Yamato and Sai they did that never have that well and that's the thing too is like I mean I won't lie to you there are people who you know, not to go back on this but like people often think that Kakashi is the main character because of how much screen time he gets. Like, you wouldn't think... I mean, he is a main character, but, like, in the beginning, you didn't think he'd be, like, that important. But the more he got developed, the more you start to realize, like, wow, like, Kakashi's pretty integral to the story. Same thing, like, but that doesn't happen with anybody else, you know, because nobody else wants, like you said, once the author starts developing certain characters to the extent, that, like, that's all they become is the mainstay of the series, and that's all the focus becomes is like what happens to them so unfortunately that's why like little moments with shikamaru is awesome because you get that art yeah. that's literally just about him so and but nothing like that happens like lee I, I saw your video a while ago about how lee was just kind of like left in the wind so yeah like, bro like he was lee very was... he was very important and popular in part one and um he had very good fights in part one but then the peers from the series essentially well, i told somebody else a long time ago i was like bro like in terms of skill and personality lee owned a good part of part one <laughs> like i mean yeah. there was a lot of he has two he has two fights like he has two big fights of course he fights against the sound team in the forest of death too but that was mm -hmm. much more of a of a sakura sasuke moment but it was interesting yeah. and then he has that brief fight when he storms sasuke but like he has two big fights he has um, his fight against gara which is many people's favorite and then against kimimaru which is the funniest fight in the series like uh, those two fights are yeah. great and well, like he got a lot of attention in part one like he owned a good part of part one's like attention and like, it's not as though watching. he was he was too much in part one it's just he had the a good amount of screen time like it, that wasn't overshadowing Naruto or Sasuke screen time but um, he was still impactful and that's what you're essentially aiming for and then the character disappears and Chiput and just... as far as part one I think if, if I had to pick somebody else aside from maybe like one of the other side characters aside from Shikamaru that got the most developed it would probably be Lee um, oh yeah because, uh, I mean even Neji like Neji got some very interesting development in part one he did, but for some reason, it it feels like he got, like I feel like compared to people like Shikamaru and Lee, he's kind of like in third place. I know, mean, sure, like, sure, like... yeah. But compare um like what he got in part one to what he got in Shippuden. He just dies. That's literally the only yeah. thing Neji does in Shippuden after, you know, uh, four hundred chapters after the time skip, and then he dies after oh, no aside, development. Aside from Shikamaru and arguably Hinata, everybody in the Konoha Eleven figuratively die. <laughs> 
they don't get any other screen time like yeah. at all i mean yeah oh. hinata has that small moment with pain which is interesting mm. but like is that really everything you could have done i don't yeah. know well for me the, the kona 11 resemble the rest of the z fighters in dragon ball i like, haven't seen dragon ball so i wouldn't know oh gotcha well, it's, <laughs> it's pretty much like they, they disappear Pretty, I mean, there's only like four fighters that the rest of like the majority of the series like pays attention to, and then the rest are like there just to fill the room, and that's exactly how the Kona Hall Eleven feel. They're just there to fill a scene with other characters, and mm -hmm. they just don't like people like. Uh, Shino became Sh a joke in part two. I loved Shino in the yeah, part one. He I was the Shino man. Too. Shino was great. Like, and then I was, I was excited to see. Well, first of all, I don't like his design in part two. I'll be honest. Yeah, me neither. Looks, me neither. I think I he looked stupid. better in part one. Yeah. And then, yeah, I thought he was pretty smart. I thought he was. I mean, she knew. She knew. It was definitely the second st smartest guy in in the Konoha Twelve in Part One after Shikamaru. I agree. Like, no, there's agree. there's no question about it. I mean, Sasuke becomes very strategic after the time skip, and he wasn't like dumb before the time skip. But she knew his fights were strategic. Like, like Shikamaru's fights were almost. Well, he and, put in no effort with Taku, and then he put like minimal effort against Konkuro, as far as like, I mean, really, the only thing that was giving him a trouble was the poison. Like, I mean, yeah, it was it was a really tough fight. Uh, like Shino versus Conqueror is one of those very overlooked fights too. I think it's very it's very nice, and I think it's overlooked because it's in between those very amazing fights, like the the Hiruzen fight against Orochimaru mm -hmm. and Naruto versus Gara. It's just sandwiched in between those fights, so people kind of don't pay attention to it, but it's cool. Like, it's a good fight. Well, heck, I would have been... I was excited. As I remember as a kid, I remember, like, I was like, I was like, I hope Shino, like, hurries, hurries up and beats Konkuro so he can get to Sasuke and help him, because I would think... I thought it would have been really cool of, to see Shino get involved in that fight, you mm -hmm. know, in, in, in some kind of way. I don't know how much he would have been able to do, but it still would have been cool to see Shino interact with Sasuke a little more, you know, as, as a as a comrade and like help him fight Gar a little bit and then yeah so but then they ended up getting a stalemate so I was a little disappointed but I thought for the most part I, I thought Sheena was awesome in part yeah. one I really did I was she disappointed about how he got the power creep too yeah uh Paul W saying the best side feat is him getting mad after drawing faster to blindside it Edo and Sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> Shino should, should replace Keith. Yeah, I, I just did a video oh, like a couple of days ago about what if Shino had gone in, in the Sasuke retrieval mission. Like I'm I, fine I with that. I'm fine with Shino with Shino not going and Kiba going because I understand like um, you have to focus on some characters and choose characters. But I think Shino should have gotten something in part two to compensate at least. Kiba can suck it. I don't really care. I I honestly don't. I don't like Kiba. I think he's cool enough in part one, but. I think he's still very. He becomes annoying. a joke in part two, to because he's like, I'm gonna be Hokage, not you, Naruto. That is true. I, I, I'm just like, really? Like, I don't know. I, like you can, you can, I, you I, can make that, that joke. Like it's better than than Shino's joke, I would say, because it's it's it makes more sense for the character. Like Shino, all of a sudden he's like this guy that's gloomy and um, you know, oh, yeah, I'm sad saved. because you don't remember me. But then, yeah. like, in part one, he was, like, cold and analytical. Like, it was much more interesting. And Kiba's and always been, thing, like, a goofball, but anyways. I will say that the, 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 the thing that didn't with me about Shino was that he kept saying all the time, like, oh, the reason is because of this, the reason is because of that. I'm like, bro, like, you can make up a better dialogue for Shino of all people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember that, but, like, you always, like, the reason is because this, the reason oh, is because... Oh, him explaining his, his jutsus and stuff? Like, well, like just he, the way he's like the way he talks it's like if, if he says one thing he's like yeah this happened i can't in, I can't in part two you mean yeah part two yeah like his dialogue is like it, it may just be in the, the english dub because I, I have dub and i've never watched naruto dub so i wouldn't know oh, okay it might, it might be it might. well I, then i guess it would annoy you then but it just annoyed me whenever his dialogue because he would like yeah, this. The reason is because that, or that. The reason is because this. Mm -hmm. like, bro, like, why? Like, better dialogue, please. Um, I will say like, there are. I agree with people who watch subbed a lot because I do watch subbed a lot too. But I think some voices in dub 
actually land perfectly with the characters. Um, people like Sasuke's voice and dub lands perfectly. Sasuke's perfectly voice like is not Kakashi's a bad voice dub voice. And, and Kakashi, too. like, a lot of people love Madara's voice. I hate Madara's voice in the dub. Like, I, I really, I, I hate Madara's voice in the dub. I think it's uh, cringe. I like it. I think it's. I don't know. I think it's pretty menacing. I mean. I don't know what what's about that voice. Like I think the 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 actor's trying too hard to be, you know, edgy and intimidating, and it just comes off weird for me. I don't know. Um, I mean, I can I can I can respect that. I mean, like I said, it's it is a, it's subjective. I I because there are people who like. No, so oh, yeah, I know, I know voice. it's subjective, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I never watch anything. Um, not in its original state, I would say. I always watch the original language that the thing was made. Gotcha. If I need sub subtitles, I, I use subtitles, but otherwise... Well, there are many animes that I do watch subbed a lot, but there are a couple that, like, I kind of grew up watching dub, so it's like, to watch it and sub is only is kind of weird, because like, uh -huh. for I, example... I, yeah, I know what for, you mean. Well, for example, like, a lot of people agree that the dubbed version of Full Metal Alchemist is the best dubbed, it's like one of the best dubbed animes ever, and like, that's how I grew up watching it, so like, watching it in mm. dub or sub now is like, I don't know, I can't get as invested in I can't get yeah, as invested yeah, yeah. in. Uh, I watch it in, I, like, I watch it in sub, so I, uh, I could oh, I probably check it out with like a scene or two to, to check the, the sub, well, the, the, anime, the dub one day. The person, who, well, the person who does Edward Elric in the dub is like one of the most sought after like anime voice actors. So who, it, who is this? The guy that does, oh, I can't remember his name, crap. Uh, Let's see. Edward Elric. Voice actor. Um, uh, English. It's actually a woman in Japanese. Victor Joseph yeah. Maynona. <clears throat> he oh Vince. Yeah, someone said Vince. Uh, Maynoya. Yeah, Victor. Or it's Vince. Victor Joseph Menonia. Yeah, he's a, he's the one. Actually, he actually voices Kid Obito in the dub. Mm. Believe it or not. Um, so yeah, his his voice act, like his delivery in Edward Elric is like top notch in my opinion. Like I said, the, I I grew up watching dubbed and uh, for Full Metal Alchemist, so like to hear like subbed, it's not bad, but I just like the deliveries of some lines wouldn't nail in subbed for me. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, someone someone asked you. Quick question: Would you ever introduce firearms either in Arto or in the Boruto rewrite? No. Well, Nagato has laser beams. Which I, I always I, thought was weird. I find that very stupid. I, I don't like that. I'll change I'll change the Asura path in the rewrites because I don't I don't like the aesthetic or anything about it. I agree. I thought that was very head scratchy to me. I was like, well, this is. I mean, even the gadgets that they have in Boruto now are still no, no, out. that that's even worse because like that can yeah. be mass produced, and why wouldn't you? Like they have Although, uh, they have an Omnitrix that can cast an Ijutsu essentially. Well, although my brother, okay, so my older brother, he doesn't watch Naruto, but like he watches clips of it every now and then, but he's not like invested in it as I am. Mm -hmm. But there was one day he was like, he's like, so he's like, he's watching an episode of Boruto with the ninja tool thing, the little yeah. the <laughs> wristband, and he looked at me, he's like, he's like, so now they can just like use any jutsu, right? I was like, yeah. He's like, why don't, why doesn't just put that on Lee? Like, you imagine how Lee, how OP with Lee would be with the eight gates and his tai jutsu <laughs> yeah. and ninja? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I actually sat there or for a few literally seconds, put that on anyone that can like any schmuck that you grab on the street it, 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 this person is now more capable than a chunin was in the in the naruto era yeah exactly like all of a sudden kakashi's ability to use 1000 jutsu doesn't seem near as impressive now i'm like you know what you're right um but i remember him say i remember like listening to him say that i was like you know what they need to give Lee that. Lee would be OP with that kind of thing. Like, yeah. That's crazy. Like, in, I think in the anime, uh, Boruto uses the purple lightning with the... Mm -hmm. And like, okay. I thought that was, was kind of cool. I, okay. Only because it's purple lightning. Like, I thought, I thought it was cool. I thought it was weird for him to use that, but still. Because um, I'm going to say something that's a little bit... I was, it's subjective, and it's but it's probably controversial, but I like Purple Lightning a lot better than... Raikiri? At least, the, at least the aesthetic of it, at the very least. I think it looks cooler than, yeah, the Raikiri. 
I mean, it's um, it's it's like the right carry, but it's purple, I guess. It's which color you like better. Yeah, well, and the I know I know before you said you're not like a huge fan of the the novels, but in the novels, like he uses purple lightning that looks similar to Kirin. Like it's a giant thunder strike or lightning strike, and it makes. Uh, Onoki like crap his pants. He's like brother. He's like these Leaf Village Ninja are reckless. <laughs> that, that is like his exact words. Like these Leaf Village Ninja like have no restraint. Um, so I, I think it's pretty. He uses it in several different ways. It is crazy. Um, because in, in so like I, in, in like he never uses it in the manga. Like never. <laughs> but, that's weird. Like, but in the anime, um, every time he uses it, um, it's just like a right a purple right here. So I'm like okay. Sorry, well, Kiri, but said, purple. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, well, Zion just, well, Zion just said here, like, purple lightning seems to have more utility than right here, and he, it does, because he uses it in several different ways. Who does he like, use that he, against? So he uses it... Okay, so the first time we ever see him use it is against this giant um, animal. I can't remember the the name. It's the class reps animal thing. Oh, the Nui? 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 Yeah. Yeah, he used it against one of her tentacles and just chops it clean off. No, yeah, I saw, uh, so, that, that, that wasn't that was the end. But I meant it like in in the um, in the novels. Like, who does he use oh. it against? Uh, crap! What does he use it against? Because uh, I remember him using it against the Nue, and then I um I, th I think he used it against Kashin Koji when he fights Kashin Koji in the anime. And then he also used it against the the Genin in their exams. Um, whenever they tell taking the bell test. Uh, he does. I don't know. Yeah, he. Uh, I don't remember. I saw that those episodes, but I, it was a long time. It was when Borto was like, like an inch away from getting the bell, and he used purple lightning from his body that looks like how Sasuke does his Chidori stream. Oh. Like, uh, which I thought was crazy. I was like, what the heck did he just do? Um, in the novels, he I forgot who he uses it against, but he ends up like splitting a giant tree in half with. The purple lightning because he like i said he calls it from the sky like how sasuke does his catering and he just completely just splits a giant tree in half um and then that's what like that's, that's what makes oniki like crap his pants he's like bro what is up with these leaf fillers ninja <laughs> um <gasps> it, it is crazy and then i think he's able to use it similar to how he would use his lightning fang like as, as like a projectile Okay. Um, I don't know if it look. I don't know if it looked like exactly like the lightning thing, but he can use it like, from long range like that. Um, so yeah, he's he's definitely. It just sounds like he kind of developed it similar to how Sasuke would develop his like Chidori aspects, like he did, like with the Ch Chidori Simbone or Chidori Stream, or whatever. It just mm -hmm. sounds like Akashi did do the same thing. And Kirin too, I suppose. Yeah, you know, like, I can't remember Chidori variant, but. No, I, I wonder how big, I, I do wonder how big it actually was because obviously big enough to split a giant tree, but I wonder if it was as big as I wouldn't think it was as big as Kirin, but it had to be in pretty pretty good size. Um, I just wish we'd see more of it though. Like I wish we'd yeah, see him Kakashi, use it. Kakashi, like he never even shows up in the Boruto manga. And, <laughs> and I'll be honest, that's another reason why I don't watch Boruto is because I knew Kakashi wasn't going to be as main, as big of a character as he was in Naruto. So like, uh, like, because Kakashi was the main reason I started watching Naruto. Because when I first started watching Naruto for the first few episodes, even when he got introduced, I was like, yeah, this show's like, this show's okay, you know? but I don't know if it's something I'm going to watch all the time. And then I remember seeing Kakashi use the lightning blade for the first time. I was like, bro. I think I'm gonna start watching this 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 uh, show more to see stuff like yeah. this. <laughs> so, um, so knowing that Kakashi wasn't gonna be in the show as much, I was like, eh, um, there's I don't a chance know. after the time skip he's gonna be more in the show or in the manga, because now that Naruto's away, <laughs> he's quote unquote dead. Somebody yeah. has to become the new Hokage. So are the, the they have two options really? They did the really two options that they have are one. So Kakashi comes back as the sixth Hokage, just like Hiruzen came back after Minato died. Okay. Or Konohama is going to be the eighth Hokage, which, I mean, it's more likely if I'm being honest, because why would they make Konohama the sensei and all that uh, if they True. are not going to do anything with him? So I think Konohama is probably going to be the eighth Hokage. 
by the time yeah. the time skip rolls around. Like, the other very people. strange option would be Sasuke? But I don't see Sasuke becoming the Hokage. Like, uh, even though he's the strongest guy they have. Um, maybe, okay, uh, maybe if they did, if they chose to not do a Hokage for the time being, like, I could see Shikamaru running the village. Sure. Not necessarily being, not necessarily being the Hokage, but like the one who's like leading everybody. Um, <clears throat> but if they had to do a Hokage, yeah, I could see either Kakashi or I would be. I would like Konohamaru to, to be a Hokage, and it'd be more believable if Konohamaru wasn't like a chump fodder. Yeah, like it's hard to take. <laughs> I don't like Konohamaru at all. He's one of my least favorite characters, so I don't want him to become the Hokage. Not that I, I really hate. Care. Which I hate. Hey, I I like Konohamaru's like personality and design or whatever, but I hate that he gets crapped on. But you oh. know, because I was looking forward to seeing how Konohamaru like fought in Boruto, but now he's. I mean, he has that one good fight with Jugo, and that was it. And that wasn't even a, a full edge fight. That was just a, a quick skirmish. Paul saying so. that there is no new Hokage face um, in the in the pro in the prologue. But they can't, like, it takes a while for them to build a face anyway, so you can say, oh, they haven't built it yet. Or True. anything like that. Well, if, they, if if that is the case, though, then I guess I could see Kakashi being the Hokage again, or Shikamaru just kind of like, yeah. subsequently, sub, like, subsequently leading everybody. And and the way um, Kawaki talks in the in the prologue implies, he says, I'll, I'll take you where I took the seventh Hokage, which is that pocket dimension that we know now. Yeah. Um, Which I knew for a fact. Like, I, I mean, at first, obviously first... Naruto wasn't that by the way he phrased it. Like, um, we knew yeah. that from the beginning. Naruto wasn't actually dead. But then, if he says, "I'm gonna take you to where I, 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 I took the seventh Hokage," you could argue that it implies there's another Hokage running stuff now. Because if True. if that was the case, you could have just said, "I'll take you to where I took Naruto." You know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. So. Maybe Kakashi's well, gonna come back. It, it would be a good way to reintroduce Kakashi into the story. But... Yeah. I, also, I um, I believe that like going off of that Kawaki subplot thing or whatever. Like I. Oh, hold on. First, um, Doctor Quasar is asking who's the other YouTuber. His Lightning Snow. Go subscribe his channel. It's in the link in the description below. There's gonna be a new video tomorrow in his channel where. Uh, we are discussing a uh, versus battle between Obito and Modder, so go subscribe to his channel. Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, now. Um, well, hey, what's up, Doctor? I didn't, I didn't mean to say, not say hi to you, but uh, yeah, just if you're looking forward to seeing his versus battle video, definitely subscribe. I appreciate it if you did. Um, I, uh,. Going off to the the Kawaki plot, I, I at first I remember watching it. And I was thinking, I was like, you know what, like I, this guy's evil. Like I, I, he's just like a hell bent on, you know, taking everything. But then I was like, you know what, maybe now that I really like, maybe he's doing this similar to how Madara and Obito were doing their plan. Like one of those things where it's a it's a weird blend between selfishness and selfishness, where you know he's do he's doing it for the good of everybody. Maybe I don't know, like. Like he's sending them it's, to a place. It's much to more implied them. he's he's doing what he does just for Naruto because he just cares about Naruto. Uh, but the thing is, it would have been much more interesting if Boruto and Kawaki, the, the relationship was more believable because I never bought they were quote unquote brothers. Like, eh. I, I, I can agree. I understand that it's very not very believable. I, I think. I agree with the premise they were doing, if that makes any sense. Like, I, I, I agree with what they're trying to do, but like you said, it's in execution. It's not, it's not the greatest. Like, it doesn't really work um, because I like the idea of Naruto adopting somebody and trying to bring no, someone I, who needs I, a fan. I think that's fine too as a concept. The way they did like, it, like, like, yeah. Like you said, in execution, it, it, it kind of failed a little bit. Also, it also fails to me just because of the Otsutsukis being a thing. Like, it would have been much more interesting if Kawaki was maybe a ninja from an unknown nation with a very rare KK Genkai or something like that. That was um, chased by, I don't know, um, rogue ninjas or stuff like that instead of just aliens. Because the Otsutsukis for me, they are the biggest problem in the entire Naruto franchise. They kind of ruin everything they touch. 
I don't know. Me. What are your thoughts about so, Kagi and stuff like that? Oh, I don't like the I don't like those. I think the the aspect of aliens really is like a Kaguya was fine. I think Kaguya should have where where is where it should have left off at. Like I don't mind Kaguya that much, but I think the the aspect of aliens is kind of just uh, uh like uh yeah that's the yeah, it's, it, it seems a little bit contrived and it seems like it falls out of the realm of possibility. You know it it. I don't know. I, I just I knew for a fact that once we got introduced to Momoshiki, like okay, this is it's just gonna be about the Osusuki clan. It's gonna be a like, running theme now. Yeah, I was like, all right, that's again, whatever. That's, but someone asked me, my, so it's my metric for what a good Naruto YouTuber is whether he thinks hard work was the main theme or not. What does Lightning Stone stand? Um, well, it's funny you say that because that like I don't know if this is will answer your question. Uh, very nice name. But um, we were just talking about how, like, for me, I don't like a lot of the big, big scale fights. I do, but I don't like the the giant avatars and whatnot, like the landscaping, uh, Huey Blast and whatever. I I like them, but what to me, what Naruto was, what Naruto meant to me was. Or what got me hooked was the the small one on one grounded fights between ninjas. Like, you know, I love the, the the fights that had you on the edge of your seat with the small hand to hand ninjutsu fights like Kakashi versus Obito. And to me, I told Daigo earlier this like that was my favorite fight because it it represented all of what Naruto meant. You know, not all like half of it was like the obviously the ninjutsu fights, but like you said. The other aspect was hard work, you know, beats out natural talent. And it's cool th to see that Naruto can work so hard to overcome someone as naturally gifted as Sasuke. So, like, to answer your question, I think the main theme I, I was was hard work. It, it just kind of fell short of that because of the whole naruto and sasuke being re reincarnated into injure and Austria, which i didn't agree with i thought that was very left field i thought it was a cool idea but i don't like the, the reincarnations either well if the main idea wasn't hard work then it'd be more believable and i could probably deal with it more but the fact that we we're meant to believe that naruto was supposed to be working hard to surpass someone like sasuke I, or to surpass I, hokage like and then it just didn't happen that way it was kind of like uh okay I actually disagree with you there, because for me, hard work versus natural talent is much more a theme um, in the Lee versus Gara fight and then the Jubidara versus Guy fight. Uh, and they lose. <laughs> so, like, yeah. uh, their hard work didn't pay off. I'm, I mean, um, they lose the fight, but they actually win in different ways. For example, Guy. Um, he's able to delay Jubidara long enough for Sasuke and Naruto to arrive, and Lee actually proves he's a great ninja. But this is a very debatable theme, too. Well, the, well it also, you know, it, it works for Naruto, though, because, you know, throughout the beginning of Shippuden to probably until the pain fight, like, Naruto was legit thinking that all his hard work was never going to pay off because Sasuke just kept getting stronger and stronger. But then during, like, once we got to the pain arc, he started working hard to, you know, build Ross and Shuriken and then Sage Mode. And then Naruto far, well, not far out clips Sasuke, but he got ahead of Sasuke at the very least at that time. So it's like, it's one of those things where, like, the hard work does pay off eventually for Naruto, at least for Naruto. Like, yeah, I can, I can agree with you about Lee and Guy. They, they, they got the short end of the stick, but I mean, you can agree that. They, they had paid off in some kind of way because nobody else in the moment could have dealt with Madara. Um, yeah, sure, but with... um, like Naruto definitely worked hard, but he also had a lot of natural talent. Like people don't really realize that, but Naruto had more chakra than any person on the planet. Um, already in chapter one of the series, he had more chakra than literally anybody else, and he had a demon inside of him that granted him all types of powers and stuff. So that it's not just like not just not just hard work you know he had natural talent he wasn't you know um someone like sasuke who got things quickly but he had other things going for him yeah i remember like thinking it wasn't even just like the the nine tails chakra thing because he his mom came from a clan that had a plethora of chakra like yeah. they all have was a chakra and then minato also again like i said earlier he did 
Like, Venus just never seemed to run out of chakra, so, like, I mean, like I said, Namikaze clan has a history of people who have a good reserve of chakra as well. So, um, so I, I can agree with you. Like, it, it, it's a really weird, I think that's where the premise was, or the, the series was trying to go for, that hard work eventually beats out talent, but it, it kind of felt, it falls short every now and then because of, like, how it, stuff is presented. Um, I think I think Shippuden, or at least beginning to mid Shippuden, does a good job of like making you feel like the the, the hard work that Naruto puts in doesn't isn't gonna like eclipse Sasuke or doesn't really gonna, not gonna amount much when it comes to Sasuke. But eventually, I feel like again once once he learns Sage Mode, I feel like that that realization finally comes to a head. It's like okay, like. Naruto is exactly. surpassing people. Like he's surpassing Minato to some extent. He's surpassing Jiraiya, and then he'll eventually get get che- you know quote catch up to Sasuke. So I but, I think that's what they're I think that's where they're trying to go to. But like you said, it, it kind of falls short because of the natural talent that Naruto does does have. Of course, we all know that the actual theme in Naruto is Hikaku Uchiha. Um <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's, 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 just, uh, it's just another it's another instance of people just not getting screen time. Oh, uh, getting one panel in the manga, man. They did him dirty. They do a lot of Uchiha dirty. I would have actually liked to see like a lot more of the Uchiha fight because we don't really see any of the Uchiha clan members, like because they're supposed we're all led to believe in part one that they're like a super elite ninja in in the village, but. We never really got to see anybody beside from the main five fight. Yeah. And, uh, you would imagine and, that they and, would also um, not be, you know, fireball spammers. Like, they would have different jutsus depending on which members um, of the clan you're talking about. True, because, like, the way they made it seem was the Sarutobi clan was the fire style experts. <laughs> but, and, and then they make it seem like the Uchiha clan are. So I'm like, okay. Uh, they're probably both good in their own different ways um like and that's what the fireball that's is where the I get, staple jutsu of uchiha <laughs> and that's what i was telling you about earlier i think it, instead of the boruto series it would have been a good idea to have anthologies about oh, yeah, characters yeah. we know little about like again like hikaku uchiha or sasuke sarutobi like like it'd been really cool to see people who are legendary or sakamo hatake people who are legendary to see how they fight in their time and their day and yeah so it wait I mean, kind of keep... got that from time to time in some filler episodes, but the filler arcs are also boring. Usually they're poorly written, the animation isn't great, and they kind of tank the pacing of the main story, so you just dislike them by the nature of it. Um, but if you got an actual anthology series, that could have worked much better. Someone said, Amaterasu never does anything. Bro, I don't think I've ever heard more of a true statement. <laughs> Oh my god. Amaterasu I, I is think... useful against B once. Uh, yeah. It breaks Itachi out of the frog stomach. In the. Sasuke does a couple of things with uh, flame control here and there against the Raikagi in the war arc. Um, but mostly in the war arc against Zetsus, which is not. Yeah, and those weird Tanteo clones. But Amaterasu then... really gets the short end of the stick. It's oh, my man. favorite jutsu in the series. And it's supposed to be it's... completely OP, but. Yeah, I said like, it's up there in mine. It's like my top five favorite jutsu, and I think it got done really dirty. I oh I, I made an entire video about it like back in the day, like it maybe is. five or six months ago or something. Ridiculous. But How, yeah, because like, at the time when it was introduced, we're like, bro, what are these black flames? That like, this is freaking amazing. But um, when Itachi uses it against Sasuke, um, when the fireball clash uh, happens, that was cool. That was like a great scene. Like, that was really cool. Imagine, like, a fire that burns fire away. This is insane. Like, you're like, what? <laughs> For real. It, like, it never kills anybody. Like, that's uh, hard. I'm aware. Like, yeah, it's one of those problems. Uh, like, it only kills black sets. No, not black sets. White sets. And um, those juby things. The clones that are yeah. fighting against everyone. Even when that samurai gets hit by Amaterasu in the Five Kage Summit. Uh, when the Raikage dodges it and then it hits the mm-hmm. samurai behind him like the samurai survives the Temari and, and Conqueror just removed his armor and, and it's fine like why why don't you just kill the guy like show the thing being powerful <laughs> I don't oh, know. You know 
I just it's one of those things where it's like I use I mean I guess it got overshadowed by Kamui a lot so true it's just, true it, unfortunately and that and Rasengan and shit, I mean I don't know. What's another jutsu that got, got overshadowed by everything? I'm trying to think about like another jutsu that got done really dirty. Um, you could say probably the Gentle Fist, you know, the Hyuga Clan in, in general. That is true. That should be a counter to everybody, like, who is subjected to being yeah. to hit by like, that jutsu. Like, yeah. that, that should... It's tough. The Hyuga Clan got done dirty. The Hyuga Clan got done real dirty. I will say that. Because yeah. um, at the time they were introduced, they are like one of the the best clans in the Lee Village, but then, like, yeah, nothing, nothing ends up happening. A Matarasu can kill, but the, there are too many counters. Hydra saying, "Yeah, I guess." But then, if you, if every single thing can counter your overpowered, you know, cool jutsu, then your jutsu is weak. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, someone, someone, one of yours says Tyler Foss, uh, says, "Do you get?" Naruto failing three times because that makes no sense. Uh, I made a video about that in the past. I, I came up with a, a couple of theories as to why that is, but it, it's a weird statement. And well, one thing I will say that's odd is that shouldn't Naruto be older than exactly? The that's that's right. one of the points they make. But uh, I mean, that, like that, you could maybe just... rationalize that Naruto just went ahead and took the exams before he was ready, like just because he was headstrong and said I can do it, whatever, and then he just failed and failed. Like he should technically be in the class before Neji and Lee. Yeah, but then, and like, uh, I, I kind of rationalize it saying Naruto that the, you can take the exam quote unquote whenever you want, but usually True. Uh, you, can, you can have to get recommended to actually pass. So Naruto was just going there and trying and flailing when he was younger yeah. than everybody, but it is one of those weird statements because Naruto is even younger than, than Sasuke and Sakura. Kishimoto is just hoping that people don't notice that or people forget about that. Yeah, like, forget, you just, like, forget over, about over, Overlook that, please. And mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, what's, no, what's another? I'm trying to think of like a. A jutsu that fell off? No, I'm trying to think of like a plot point now because we're on plot points about like that just didn't make any sense to me. And I'm, I know there's a, there, I know there's a couple that there's just baffling and usually they come really early on when kishimoto wasn't really sure about how things were gonna pan out you know for for a long spanning series like this thing about naruto failing three times and then yeah. actually um you should be older than the rest but not really or how about or how about because i know you did a video on this a while back well how about the ambu let's talk about the ambu sucking bro like good lord yeah um i'm actually gonna make a video about the root Ambu next. This the Yamu video I think came out like three weeks ago or something. But yeah, the Ambu, they were just used as jobbers for the most part, unfortunately. It, it sucks because like I remember watching part one, looking at these guys like, bro, these are these guys are serious. Like, like I know for a fact like they like uh, whenever they're on screen like things are gonna be remotely safe or okay, but then they don't amount to like the Joni do just as much if not more than the Ambu Black Ops do. So yeah, and I uh, and I always thought, and I might be, I might be still right on this, but I always thought whenever I was a kid that Ambu was like the direct rank under Hokage. Like if you got to Ambu, then you were like there, like you were almost at Hokage. It's it's but, more it, the Ambu's like outside of the ninja ranking, but you need to be a Jonin to become an Ambu. Um, like they have to be elite ninjas, but it's kind of outside the ranking. I. I don't really see an Ambu member being promoted to Hokage, you know, directly. Of course, Kakashi right. becomes a Hokage, but he was a, a regular Jonin for years after yeah. he was an Ambu member. Well, he's the only one, as far as I'm aware, he's the only one that's had all ranks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I, I don't know. I think if, if, if Kishimoto were to tell me that Kakashi is his favorite character, I would probably agree, just because of how much attention he gets. But. It, it's I pretty think, crazy. I think Ishimoto's favorite character is Sasuke, actually. Um, I think I think I've read that too. I just I, I remember. Okay, so I remember watching uh, or reading because I read the manga about it first. The chapter when Kakashi dies, and oh, right. I was like, I was like, bro, I wonder. And then he brought, he brings him back. I was like, bro, I wonder if Kishimoto did that just to get a reaction out of people. Like to see I mean, definitely, react. definitely, like, and to and to make things 
hype, I suppose. Like, oh, Naruto's gonna fight the guy that killed Jiraiya and Kakashi. Holy crap. I was thinking that, I was like, bro, well, at first I believed it. Because it, it was true, technically, but I threw my book. And then I thought about it for a minute. I was like, bro, they just killed Jiraiya. There is no way they're gonna kill another one of Naruto's teachers right off the freaking bat. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I, I I was I was upset. I actually stopped watching it for like three weeks, believe it or not. And I actually had to have someone tell me that they read it again, or they read the the next one that uh, Kakashi gets brought back. I was like, no, you're lying. He's like, all right, well, read. I mean, but uh, Kakashi, like, it takes like it takes like fifteen or so chapters for Kakashi to come back. He stays dead for a while, you know. I know, bro. And then, well, and then, what was it? It was a. Uh, when Naruto came back on the scene, or came on the scene, and he asked Tsunade, Oh like, yeah, Kakashi, is he outside of the village in the mission or something? And bro, I, I actually forgot about it for a second there. As I was reading it, I was like, I clicked because I was so invested in what was happening, I actually forgot that Kakashi was dead for a second. And, <laughs> and, so and I, hard, I was, I was like, yeah, no, he's dead. <laughs> I was like, you mother sucker. I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, I forgot. I think that was because that was the confirmation that he's actually dead. I was like, bro, he actually is dead. They ain't no freaking way. So, um... So yeah, I, I was like, bro, I bet Kishimoto did that to get a reaction out of people, just to see. Because, like, I think, like, the first thing Kakashi does after coming back to life is going to find Naruto. Yeah. Which I thought was, I thought was great. I thought that was a great moment, but, um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Nemesis saying, personally, I didn't like the Hashirama being retconned to be stronger than Minato. It kind of betrays one of the themes of Naruto, which is to, that uh, the younger generation always surpasses the previous one. I think this is kind of a. Eh, I don't I agree don't with that statement. Sure. Yeah, even in the universe, like, but well, because every, okay, because we got this excerpt from everybody else that was that saw what Minato was capable of, and a lot of people were just saying that he was the best, according to them. Like people like Anko, and he was like in his generation, Naruto. Minato was by far the strongest ninja. Yeah, because like the, in the very first episode, you get that little like snippet from naruto saying like oh yeah the fourth okage he was the best i'm like well naruto has no idea who hashirama is like yeah he knows the first okage but i guarantee you know he knows nothing more than that so like people like hirazen would probably know like yeah minato is not stronger than hashirama like hashirama is definitely i get what nemesis is saying because we were led to believe that minato is yeah no that was like, a was retcon that, that indeed was a retcon minato was the strongest you know ever in the beginning of the series. Um, it's a very much implied that the Hashirama and the Tobirama that Hiruzen fought uh, in the Chunin exams were their actual forms, you know, their prime forms. Then, of course, this oh, is okay. Rackhaunt, but, um, and Hashirama becomes the god of Shinobi. And I like that. Well, I like Hashirama and Madara being these legendary ninjas that created the Valley of the End by yeah. fighting. <laughs> Well, I remember, I remember watching the heroes and fight against Orochimaru as a kid for the first time, and like whenever Orochimaru summoned the first two, and I saw the third one come up, and he's like, "No, I gotta stop that! Th I gotta stop that third one at all costs." I was like, "Bro, I know that's the fourth Okage. Like, I know for a fact that man would have wrecked everything if if he had, if he'd have been oh, a win awoke, awoken." But but I remember, I remember for him from heroes and doing that, I was like. Wow, the fourth Okage really is the strongest one, bro. Like, I wonder what, how that fight would have happened if Minato awoke. Yeah, probably would have been screwed. <laughs> like, um, yeah, it is implied that Hashirama's and Tobirama's powers were like that, um, like their Edo forms in part one. And it's just that the power of the series um, escalated way more in the end of the day. So uh, now I'm curious as to when... Uh, so when did... So when did we get that confirmation that, like, the... The, the versions that Orochimaru summoned were, like, 10% of their original power? Because now I'm curious, like... I th it's only when Kabuto used the Edo Tensei, and then he explains that um, Orochimaru's wasn't perfect. Uh, oh, okay. Like, to Tobirama's Edo Tensei was, like, a very crude uh, version. Orochimaru made it a little better, but didn't perfect it. <laughs> and then Kabuto made it, you know, the, the best jutsu it could possibly be, bringing people back almost at their full power. Someone said... He's scared if Minato found out he was letting Naruto pay bills. But yeah. But, 
Um, what was it? This is one oh, of the, that's right. This is one of the that's strange right, things, right. though. Like, um, it's just because there, some filler episodes paint heroes in, in a very bad light. Like that you, that filler you, episode where where he just arrived at Naruto's house, gives Naruto money, and then Naruto asks, "Where are my parents?" And then Hiruzen says, "Shut up, we'll just just pay your rent," <laughs> and he I leaves. I think that I think Hiruzen got done dirty as far as personality wise. Cause I think he like he at first when we first introduced him to part one, he's he's written as this genuine like kind old man who really yeah. does care about Naruto yeah. and like. And now all these filler episodes are just like to make it seem like a, he's a jerk. I'm like, bro, they, no way. I'm not believing. I didn't believe any of that crap when I first watched it. I'll be honest no, with you. I, mean, I believe it's filler. 100%. It doesn't matter. I know, but people, I hate when people like take that like literal and as as here isn't never caring about Naruto. I'm like, bro, yeah, that, that like, seems like the one of the worst scenes I've ever seen in any filler. Like that kind of destroy the character. He gives Naruto yeah. money. And Naruto asks for my parents, and then. <laughs> He says, "Shut up, yeah. and don't, don't, don't spend too much money on on, on crap." Like, and then he leaves, and like, what? But, but people who, but people who complain about that, they have to remember that like, that was before Minato was introduced as Darth's dad. Even though if you figured it out, like, that was wasn't it? the intention. What? Was it? I don't remember when that filler came out maybe, though. Or maybe, maybe it was after. But like, still, we were meant to believe that like, Minato wasn't Naruto's dad, or at least... I mean, in hindsight, I mean, if you if you really overanalyze things, Hiruzen and Jiraiya, they didn't raise Naruto. Um, and this is never really explained. Like, one of them should have raised Naruto. I mean, li right? Or Kakashi, for that or, matter. Or, I mean, sure, Kakashi was like 16 at the time Minato died, so... Or even younger, I think... He, uh, 15, 15. He was 15. Yeah. So, maybe not Kakashi... Um, but like, well, Jiraiya was say, literally yeah. Naruto's godfather. That's what you're supposed to be the godfather. Like, it's kind of like a retcon in itself that Jiraiya didn't like look after Naruto because, like you said, he's his godfather. So it's like, well, of all people that should have raised Naruto, you would have thought that. I mean, the only thing I can really say, say that as a as an excuse is that Jiraiya was trying to work on intel outside of the village for like years about how he was like investigating Orochimaru and this and yeah. that so like maybe but I don't know like, I, I would have felt that like at some point you know Jiraiya would have came in, in Naruto's early years to look after him but because in the beginning when we're, when we're introduced to Jiraiya in part one we're, we're introduced to Jiraiya as someone who doesn't want anything to do with Naruto I'm like yeah but he's being he's like now, he's playing like he's playing Naruto in that situation he's just being cool yeah Essentially. Yeah, so I'm like, it makes... bro, what the heck? But, I don't know. I, there's a lot of retcon. It's not really a retcon per se, but it's just one of those things where you kind of, in hindsight, you think about it like, well, that's weird. I'm I'm that's actually weird. in the rewrite. I'm going to give that a... I'm going to actually <clears throat> explore that and give Jiraiya a reason as to why he didn't raise Naruto. I've done that with Hiruzen already, but I think Jiraiya is more important to do. For, for this to be explained, like, why would you leave Naruto alone in the village? True. Um, Someone said, who was taking care of Sasuke? Sasuke was taking care of himself, dog. That man, that man was a grown-up. Well, not really a grown-up. He was seven but... when the Uchiha clan was massacred, but hmm. I don't think Sasuke would have wanted to be raised by anybody else. Yeah, we see Sasuke's very introverted. Especially and... after the, the family massacre, like, he, he becomes a massive introvert and probably would be one to let alone honestly like one thing i did i never really liked about sasuke though is his sense of superiority which kakashi does call him out on because like <clears throat> which I, I get he's i'm he's fine with skilled. that like i'm fine with that like it's a character ploy like the, the true that is true yeah that you got a point there oh that's just one of those things where like Kakashi says, yeah, you're different than anybody other than, than the rest, but it doesn't mean you're better than them. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing I didn't like about Sasuke is how he doesn't really address everybody, like, as sensei. With the honorifics. Like, he, he doesn't use honorifics. Like, even, it, yeah. like, in, in yeah, uh, as you don't watch dub as much, um, if they always address each other with, like, Sasuke-kun or... Jun or Sama, some of her for like more important people, but they most of the time they use honorifics 
in Naruto, and, and Sasuke doesn't. He, he never does that after the Uchiha clan massacre because he just becomes this jaded person that is rude, essentially. This yeah. is seen as rude. And it's, well, one of, it's one of those things Sasuke does. Well, like, in, now in Boruto now, like, you, you can clearly tell it's different because uh, in... I can't remember if this is technically filler because I'm pretty sure it's manga, but it's whenever Sasuke is training Sarada to use Chidori or he's showing Chidori that's to not, for the first time. That's not in the manga. Okay. Well, in the anime, in the sub at least, he, he obviously he explains how the jutsu works and everything. And he, he's like, yeah, this jutsu was passed down from me from Kakashi Sensei. Like, I was like, it always surprises me to hear Sasuke say Sensei. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because he's, uh, he changed it, um, after. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. Like, I like it. That type of thing and is good. Sometimes you can sometimes you can equate it as Sasuke just kind of being chill because there because like, sometimes Shikamaru addresses Asuma as just Asuma, but it's but that's it's different. different. It's like, different because he, he it's because he's more intimate with him. Yeah, Sasuke, like, it's because it's rude and he wants distance, and that's yeah. why he he doesn't use an orifix. So uh, and that's what makes me feel like that's what makes me like the moment uh, when. Sasuke's having the inner monologue uh, at the end of the series when he's talking about how he's always felt about Naruto and Team 7 like by extension mm -hmm. um, and we get that little snippet of him saying like I've I've began to see a shadow of my own family in, in Team 7 and it's like one of those things where it's like okay like you know you, you always got snippets of Sasuke caring about his team but you really never realized how much he like to the extent of how much he cared until that little, you know, monologue, and it's like, man, like he really started thinking of Team Seven as his replacement family, so to speak. Like that's yeah. that they they were all he cared about for a long time. So, and that's um, why he got so like pissed when Itachi showed up and bodied him. He's like, I'm having this new family here, and I'm 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 living a an okay life now, but. I'm losing sight of my goal here. And it wasn't an easy choice, man, for him to leave. Like he like you can tell yeah. after the conversation with Kakashi, he was like, Bro, what should I do? Like what like what's the right way to do things? And I don't know. Like he I there I was talking to somebody a long time ago about this. I actually made a video about it. Not this specifically, but we had a conversation about this topic about he's like he's like, I bet like say if like it was the other way around and the sound village ninja approached Sasuke first and then Kakashi approached him afterwards like I bet with a little more time to think on it like Sasuke may have chosen to stay in the village but yeah maybe like, the sound town village just the sound forest came at like the worst possible time um so um but yeah and that's why like I like Sasuke's complexity people like give him crap about leaving and I understand but it was not a hard it was not an easy decision for him to make like that's what makes the character interesting anyway yeah, but the the conflict he has uh, him needing revenge and also wanting to get this new family with naruto and I, the others it's i thought really about good. doing i thought about doing a what if scenario video about like what if not so much like solely because it'd, it'd be a main the main topic would be a versus battle video but like it would be like what if sasuke stayed in the village instead and what if team Kaka like Team Seven fought Itachi, like. Oh, okay. If they like, train to go after Itachi. Yeah, like I know Sasuke. This this would never happen, but like let's say if Sasuke had mailed out a little bit and decided that like because Team Seven is his family, like what if he allowed them to help them take revenge? You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. as a team, would they fight? Would they beat yeah. Itachi? Something like that. So Sasuke would kind of be a little bit nerfed than he was in Shippuden, but like he'd still train a lot. So I don't know. It was one of those ideas where like, I would have to I, do a lot of because like, Naruto Naruto wouldn't have left the village in that situation. Um, so they would still be in the village. And I think if Naruto and Sasuke trained together, they could even push each other further because um, of their rivalry. I, yeah, it's an interesting scenario. So I, I I might have to table that one for a little bit just to kind of like do a little more thinking about how I feel like the skill sets would be. But I think it'd be a cool idea for all of Team 7 to kind of fight Itachi. Yeah. Uh, for more videos like this, subscribe to Lightning's Nose channel. It's in the link in the description below. First link. And tomorrow's going to be a video. Um, 
Madara versus Obito, where we're gonna talk about that what if scenario in the I won't war. Say the version yet. I won't say the. I mean, I mean, in the war, but I won't say what like which version. But you probably could probably. <laughs> yeah, probably guess. Probably guess. Perhaps. Yeah. <clears throat> Obito's another character that gets misanalyzed a lot. I will say that. I think Obito gets done dirty as far as like because I think he's a he's a very indecisive character amongst the fandom. Yeah, uh, he's like the black sheep of the of the Uchiha clan. But I well, I like the, I like the fact that like now people might call me stupid for this, but I will say that for the beginning of the Shippuden arc, um, or for the most for the beginning of Shippuden, I actually thought that Toby was Madara. Um, I mean, that's not like outrageous to think about, like. Well, uh, I, well, okay, so when I started getting, when we started getting more hints that it could be Obito, I thought that it was still Madara, but I thought it was Madara maybe using Obito's body the same way, like, mm -hmm. Orochimaru was planning to use Sasuke's body. So, yeah, no, that, that was a, that was a genuine theory back in the day, like, and it, it's not a, you know, out of the realm of possibility, I would say. So, like, and then once I saw Madara get on the, on the scene, like, actually Madara get on the scene, and the war arc, I was like, okay. Now that I know that's Obito for a fact, um, mm -hmm. there were people there were people thinking that it was Shisui, which I was like, I could see that. But then once Kakashi started like breaking down the, the reason of how uh, the reason why people thought it it, it could have been Shisui, it, it's because there's that scene when Kabuto's explaining the Edo Tensei to Toby, and he says, "I couldn't mm -hmm. find Shisui's body anywhere," and then it cuts to Toby, and it's kind of like, mm, "Is he Shisui? I don't know." Which, that would have been cool enough, just because I think Shisui is an also underrated character, just because of the, the the limited screen time he gets. But I'm glad it was Obito because I think. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, I think Obito's well, Obito is one of my top five favorite characters because he's in the series. Because you when you first got that uh, backstory on him and, and the Kakashi Gaiden, like you didn't think he was going to be in the series. You just thought you, you just thought he was this throwaway character, kind of like. That gave um, Kakashi his motivation and his yeah, line like, about uh, yeah. ninjas that don't follow orders, they are scum, but uh, if you yeah. betray your friends, you're worse than that. Yeah, so like, but I wasn't expecting him to be such a prominent character, and I think he has a really cool character arc, and, the, and not redemption, but like... An interesting conclusion, or, perhaps. Yeah. Well, that, it's, that it is it has... is kind of a redemption arc. Like, um, by the end of the series, he is a good guy and he's helping the good guys. Uh, so I, I, you can't say it's a redemption arc. He finds himself, and that's that's pretty much what all it is. You know, I I'm that not was... a big Obito fan, but I can see, uh, I can see the appeal. Well, his death scene in the anime gets me like every time. I won't lie to you, because it's someone like. I don't know, especially when you take into account that he was manipulated the entire time, and like, I don't know, if if he'd have been founded by somebody else besides Madara, he would have stayed in the village, and that's one of those things where like you in the, in or, during his death. I scene, think if he wouldn't, if he was found by anybody else, he would have died. To be honest, because like that's true. Yeah, Madara right. Madara used the Zetsu cells to save, save his body together. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, well I, well, I meant to say, like, I I think that, like, I don't know, during his death scene, when he, when he goes on the monologue and you hear, like, like, Obito got screwed, bro. It was not, it is not fair, like, his character arc. Well, I get it. That's, like, the point of this character. It's supposed to be, like, a tragic character arc. But I, I, I just feel like every time his, his death scene, I see it, I'm like, bro, that it just sucks, bro. He got the short end of the stick. He could have been so <laughs> yeah. much, he could have been so much more. And... But that's what that's what the, that's what makes his death scene so powerful. And then when he turns to Naruto, and says, "Become Hokage at all costs." To me, when I hear him say that, it's it's not just like he wants Naruto to become. He's like, "I don't want you to become me." Like, you know, don't like become Hokage at all costs. Don't become me. Like, don't follow my path. So, to me, that's what that 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 moment speaks to me. It's just that it, it's kind of ruined by the Obito was the coolest guy line. That line's it is. cringe. 
Like, I mean, I get what Naruto was trying to do. I get, I get it, but you know that that line could have been. I mean, he could have said anything else. He could have yeah. been like, he could have been like, nope, he was a hero or something like that. Like it could have been changed a little bit. Um, or Obito's not trash or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because Zetsu was like calling him a cockroach or something like that, and Naruto could have been like, could have said something a little bit more cool. But I, I get what you're saying. Um, some people think it's it's ruined by him going to Ninja Heaven, and uh, uh, and then him yeah. giving him <laughs> giving Kakashi his that one was a, a huge head scratcher. Like in the moment, I wasn't complaining about it because I thought it was cool as crap, but like. In hindsight, you're like, ah, oh, right. You know, well, I, you know, I remember like reading. Okay, so I remember reading the chapter as it came out, and I, because I, I read them online when I, when they came out, and I remember wa- reading it. And while I was reading it, I was like, oh, this is freaking pimp, bro. This is hype as crap. And then after the after I read it, I sat there and thought about it for a second. Like, Wait, wait a minute. How did that even happen? How did that even happen in the first place? I don't understand that. So, I get it, but. I'm not gonna hate on it because I thought it was pimp. I thought it was amazing. Uh, Cause, I mean, bro, I was I was feeling bad for my boy. Like I was like Kakashi would just stand there like a scarecrow, bro. And I was like, what, yeah. what is he gonna do? Like, what is he gonna do against Kaguya? So, um, so I, I mean, there's only five minutes. People can live with five minutes. It's fine. You know, we can we can um, suspend our disbelief for a little bit given the perfect susano i mean look people people can say all they want all the crap they want but that perfect susano was it should have been white thought, in the anime not blue i thought so too i thought so too i thought i i thought it was white whenever i, I the manga. The manga for the first time. yeah yeah i was like maybe it'll come out white but such a waste of, I mean, such a wasted opportunity there like what the hell I mean, I like my blues. My blues were my favorite colors, but I still feel like it should have been a white version. I mean, Modern's was blue already. Well, you don't need another blue one. I'm like, saying, and Kakashi's like, like the son of the White Fang. Like, just, just make it white. He's got white hair for crying out loud. Like, yeah. Uh, I, maybe they made it blue for the Lightning Blade. I don't really know. I, just, I don't know. It's, I it's mean, really the, the right Kiri, his his Kamui right Kiri was black. So, like, if anything, it should be a black suit to know. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Um, that would be pretty cool to see though too. Uh, uh, a black Susano, like, I mean, mm-hmm. maybe depending on how they drew it, I suppose. But um, I think white Susano would have been better. Um, when the chapter where Madara got betrayed by Zetsu became Kage came out, I dropped the manga. But I'm not gonna lie to you, that was a huge head scratcher for me. I uh, I was so like, disappointed that that was terrible like i remember me oh, well, reading that chapter when it came out and like i was dude they didn't do that well my my brain couldn't process it quick enough to get a, a pissed off reaction i was just like huh i was like what just happened like i really what i had to read i believe it or not i didn't even read past the first i didn't read past that chapter when the 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 panel where he stabs madara i actually went back a couple of pages i was like wait did I miss something? Like I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure I just read. Like Mater was just like Mater was just giving a speech. What what the hell just happened? Was, the fight was about to get real. <laughs> then I'm saying I was like, bro, like Mater did. What? But I actually was like, well, was Mater done talking? Like I don't even think Mater was done talking yet. And it's just, that's who stabs him. Um, yeah, that was a very huge head scratcher to me. I, I just. Again, my brain couldn't process it quick enough. I was just like, okay, so now we're dealing with this. So, so I was like, so Zetsu's the final villain? Like, you're kidding me. Like, yeah, I, I agree. Madara got done really dirty. Especially all the build up we got to Madara too. Like, yeah. I mean, that that's what pissed me off the most. It's like all the build up from part one, literally from part one. There's from, an entire the volume of the manga um, about his backstory with Hashirama too. Uh, and then, like the first time we saw him as a statue, the Ballad of Yen, I was saying like from yeah, part one that no, movie yeah, built up for I'm sure. Like, <laughs> what the heck? And now, look again, like I said earlier, like I don't mind Kaguya. I think if we got more build up from her, like midway through Shippuden, like at least a mention of her every now and then, I think it would have been 
easier to digest the fact that she would be the final villain. Um, even if they had made a different way to make her the final villain instead of just stabbing Madara, like, like, okay, if they did it this way, I think I'd be better. Like, let's say that. <clears throat> now, granted, I don't know how they would have been over able to overpower Madara, but let's say that like somehow Naruto and Sasuke and however much Sakura and Kakashi could help, like let's say they somehow get like if they, they fight Madara, right, and they get him to the brink, and he's like almost at the end and he asks Zetsu for help and then Zetsu like turns Stab. him into Kaguya. Yeah, it still would have been bad, but uh, I don't know. It would have been better than Zetsu just coming up and stabbing Madara in the back, I feel like. You know, it would have been more believable to have Kaguya. Yeah, it, it, if, it's it, just that Zetsu stabs him in the back to keep with the motif of uh, Madara being stabbed in the back even though he says nobody can, can, can catch me from behind. Yeah. Um, so I feel like if they had fought Madara first for a minute and then Madara kind of like, because he thinks Zetsu's his will, like ask Zetsu for like some chakra or some, or some help or whatever. And then Zetsu's like, yeah, sure, I'll help you, buddy. And then like, this is, how I'm, this is how I'm helping. I'm turning you into Psych. Kaguya. Something like that. Yeah, I think that would have been better because it, 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 it'd be like more of like a a sneaky kind of play like Zetsu should be. Like Zetsu's kind of sneaky. And so like, I felt like yeah. that would have been better, but I don't know. Like. I, I would still, still have a lot of moderate to be the final boss of the war. Yeah, exactly, bro. Like, I don't know. Was... That was weird. I just, like I said, if we had gotten better build up from Kaguya, then. Then maybe... nothing at all. <laughs> yeah, I was like, because we just got that one snippet from Hagoromo while Sasuke and Naruto were at Death's well, we also, door. We also get um, a little bit of information from her when Edo Mater is fighting Edo Hashirama. That's True, the first yeah, time right. she's introduced, but like, it's just Mara talking about a long gone backstory about a character we never heard before. It, I was like, either way, she came out of left field. Yeah, it's like for for, like, for real. I'm like, brother, like, huh? So I don't know. I mean, and then it, it hurts even. It's, it makes it even worse when we know that the fact that like this was their way of introducing aliens. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like. I don't know. Like I said, like I said, like I told you earlier, I, I don't like the aspect of aliens in Naruto. Out of all the really... things we could have introduced, that's what I'm saying. Like I, to me, it'd be more believable if like <clears throat> Kaguya was the result of like Ninja in the older days messing around with Chakra and accidentally making Madara or not Madara, but uh, Kaguya. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know how they would. That that that'd be something that Kishimoto would have to write on. Anything but, other like, than what we got would have probably been yeah. better. Because like even Naruto, and this is something that, uh, that like had a question mark above me too. Like Naruto asked Kagaromo, like, "Yeah, where did Kaguya come from?" It's like where she came from doesn't isn't important. Like, uh, I feel like it should be, <laughs> like especially now that she's the main villain. I feel like we should get some like, if you know where she came from, then you probably should tell us where she came from. It but, was, uh, there's like a whole slew of aliens coming to Earth after her, so you should yeah. probably give me the information here, buddy. Uh, so now it's coming from ninja. Now it's going from ninjas to sci-fi, and I'm like, I don't really know, dude. This is, I don't know. I think it's just feeling a lot, a lot of contrivances, and it's just dwelling out of the realm of possibility that that Naruto was known for. You know, like the Ten Tails, I feel like is fine. <clears throat> like, yeah, I think I think if you go. Through the work, you know, of combining every single tail beast, doing all that stuff they had to do, and then you get the super powerful thing. It's f it's okay. It's believable. Like, okay, you have this insane amount of chakra, but then make it come like from aliens. Uh, I don't know. Well, so, okay, so Swag Kage did the video on a long time ago about how he thought the war should end it, and in this specific aspect, I thought it would have been a good idea if. Because he said something along the lines of like, he's like, I think the I think the Ten Tails should have played a bigger role in the way of like, let's say if Obito and Madara when they whenever they tried to uh, absorb the Ten Tails, that it should be impossible to tame, and like, and that's the reason why Naruto and Sasuke have openings uh, dealing with Obito and Madara because, like, while they're fighting, there's this sub fight that. Within uh, Madara. Madara. I like how Obito had. Okay. 
I, I like you know the I'm fact like... that Madara has no issues controlling the ten tails. <laughs> well, admit, okay, so I would under, I would understand Madara being able to. I thought that Obito should have been able to, or not been able to tame the tame the ten tails as easily yeah. as he did. Sure, that could and be that, a thing. And, th and then that was the reason. That should have been the reason why he couldn't use Kamui, not just because oh the ten tails is inside me, you know, like which I get it. He had to nerf. Obito, because there was no way they would have stopped Obito. If he still had Kamui. No, that's that's true. Um, Jubito Kamui would have been insane. This, I mean, out of this world. Imagine, well, Jubito. Imagine, yeah, I mean, it, it well, would have been tough imagine, to deal with him. Do you think he'd been okay? So, do you think <clears throat> Juito DMS would be more hacks than Juito with Renegon? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I would think so too because that's because that's Kamui. From, he would have the perfect societal already. Yeah. Um, and all those Kamui hacks, like, yeah, it would be insane. Completely yeah, forget insane. about it, bro. It, it would not. Someone said George R. R. Martin should make. Should remake Naruto and call it the Will of Fire. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the Will of Fire. I like fire. that. Yeah, but there's a thing. It it would take forever for that book to come out. George R. Martin. Is, Low. Yeah, George R. Martin takes a long time for the books to come. I out. mean, he, he wasn't like that, but now uh, he lost his steam, I guess. Because of the, I, you know what, Boruto is the equivalent of Game of Thrones season eight, hands down. Yeah, season seven is also really bad. You know, Thrones fell off real hard. It, 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 it's tolerable when compared to season eight, but it is bad. It, 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 it's not even bad. Like I think the way that we're going it was fine. It's just in execution, it was very yeah. It didn't make things believable. It became so, dumb. Like it became a dumbed down version of the series, and then season eight just nuked everything. It really did. like I like the aspect of. Danny turning mad, mad queen or whatever. I like that, but it didn't. It didn't. It wasn't believable by the time. It, by the yeah. time it came around. No. Uh, unfortunately, that's where Boruto is kind of bad. Like things aren't as believable. Like the nerfs for Naruto and Sasuke aren't as believable. You know, they don't. I don't know. I and that's what I'm saying. Like I know I'm sounding redundant, but I would just prefer like backstory series about characters that we don't know yeah, anything about for sure instead of a new series. And I think. The fandom would have benefited a lot from that. So, which I'm glad that's what they're doing with Miss Minato series. Like, I'm glad they finally did something like that, but it, it sucks that we had to get that in place of Borto. And it's, it's going to be like one uh, one shot. It's going to be a one shot, essentially. 45 pages. So it's you, not going to be that long. So, who do you think would have won it if it wasn't like a. If it wasn't for Naruto. A Naruto would have wanted think, if it was just a straight so? popularity poll. Yeah, probably. I could see that. I thought. I mean, I, I was kind of surprised even with people knowing what the result was going to be if whoever won it. I'm surprised Kakashi got fifth. Um, because I, I yeah, just like just like Itachi getting second. It's the same. It's just yeah. because people really like those characters. Yeah, so I mean, I'm glad, bro. A worldwide popular popularity poll and Kakashi still got number five. That's crazy. Which means that honestly, if it hadn't been for the uh, the result being what it was, it means he probably would have gotten higher. Probably, maybe definitely higher than Sakura. I think that that was a total head scratcher. Well, no, I mean, actually, they not really, but... they, there was a big campaign for Sakura. That's right. Cause the, well, I, I remember saying, hearing something that like a lot of people, a lot of girls, a lot of people in Japan love Sakura. Yeah. Like they stand Sakura. So, which is fine. You know, I don't, I'm indifferent towards Sakura. I don't really hate her that much. I wish looking back on it, I wish she would have gotten written better. Cause I actually think like there are moments when she does great. I'm like, bro, if we can just get more scenes like that. Yeah. Then Sakura would be awesome. Like I, I like to, I would like to think Sakura is cool, but I can't. It's just, it's really tough for me to do so. Yeah. And still, like, he didn't win, so it's fine. Because if any of the characters in Team 7 won, it would have been just like, okay, really? Again? Yeah. A story about them? Well, 
Well, to be fair to Sakura, none of the female characters are written that great. Hinata is the only exception. I mean, they have good but moments, even... but uh, they're, they're just kind of forgotten. Like, from time like, to time. Like, Ino and Tenten, for sure, are, like, forgotten about. Yeah. And, like, again, Sakura and Hinata are the only ones that are... But a lot of times you can kind of equate that to fan service, sort of. Like, Hinata, not so much, because we finally get that, like moment with her in pain it's like that's like solidified her character moment um yeah not only you know confessing her love which is a big deal but her pretty much sacrificing herself like yeah. not even it's like second, not even taking a second thought about it so it's like one of those things where like okay that's a character moment and it's not fan We're service that's like that's what's defining character moment mm -hmm. so yeah um it, it's a good moment so, uh, uh yeah, subscribe to Lightning Snow's channel. There's going to be a video tomorrow. I, I want to keep on emphasizing that point. Um, now, Obito versus Modern, where we're going to be debating that topic and coming up with a an interesting battle and a, even a what-if scenario for tomorrow. Uh, what time do you think the yeah. video is going to come out tomorrow? More or less? Probably around 11 or 12. Okay. Um... Oh, 11 I think that way because nice. that way I know everyone's awake yeah <laughs> so I mean oh uh, go subscribe to his channel right now it's the first link in the description below um and also you have like how many videos that. you have in your channel like 500 or something you have, I have a, a lot good, of content yeah I, was, I, yeah I have a lot of content and I, unfortunately and I was telling Dago this a couple days ago like I, I fell off of doing videos and I'm trying to get back into it so it's a it's a bit of a climb up for me right now but I mean, like I said earlier, is as long as people are watching it, I don't really, I don't particularly mind how many people like. Would I like a lot of people to watch it? Watch it, absolutely. But you know, like, I just want people to enjoy it. I just want people to enjoy the con the content that I make. So, whether it's a hundred people or a hundred thousand people watching it, hey, man, as long as as long as people are enjoying it, it's all that matters. Um, cause I got, I got ideas coming out now. Like I got, a, I got a list, literally a list of video ideas. ideas. I have one of those too. Well, well, I, well, I have a, se I have two sections. I have one where like ideas that I thought of and then request that I've gotten mm -hmm. for other people. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. so if you, if you subscribe to my channel, I have a video that is literally just four people commenting on what first battle videos they want. So if you want to just comment on that or, or even what if scenarios. Video. Yeah, or what scenarios? Yeah, and I'll, I'll probably make another community post like here in like a next week or two for just requests only. So, um, because I want to make sure that like my like subscribers are like getting what they want, you know. But I'm pretty sure the ideas I have in mind are ideas they'll they'll enjoy, because I've often thought about people who people who like should be doing this in the series or whether they did that in the series or yeah. Um, and eventually, I don't know about how I don't know how you think about this, but I know it's kind of not the way the algorithm works. But I've often thought about like at, at the at some point branching out, uh, not just in Naruto. I still do Naruto videos, but like other anime videos as well. Uh, like, could, I don't know. Could be hard because um, if you have a smaller niche for your channel, it tends to be better for the algorithm and everything else. But I mean, hey, it could work. I mean, if I were to do another anime, I'd probably just maybe Dragon Ball, maybe Full Metal, but Full Metal's not really ongoing anymore. Although I've heard there might be something, something that they're developing with Full Metal Alchemist. I don't really know, but I have to do more research on that. Mm -hmm. That's nice. But I'll still, I'll still do because I remember a while ago I had asked people of whether or not they wanted, I wanted, if I, if they wanted me to do. Borto content too, and there are like a lot of people voted for just sticking to Naruto. I'm like, okay, <laughs> uh, I'm like, all right, case case closed. Um, so which I might still do Borto every now and then, but it I might wait till the series is over to do, to start like hammering Nor uh, Borto videos. That way, right? You know, it's get it get the series gets digested fully before people start making videos on. I wanna. Oh, have you seen the freaking trailers for Storm Connections? I've seen a couple of them, but I'm not terribly excited for them. I don't know. It seems like a re like a reboot, remake. 
of Storm 4. With the uh, entire I, story? I, I don't know. Well, I, I want to see... I, I'm still going to buy it, but I, I want to... I'm hoping that they... Yeah, I want to buy it too, but... They, yeah. I hope that, I'm hoping they make new costumes and movesets for people that, like... Well, again, like, specifically for Kakashi, because, like... Mm -hmm. I, have to, I have to mod... I had to mod his outfit for the, the, the black outfit from... The, the last movie. Oh, right. Uh, and, which it looks sick. But then it works online too, which is amazing. But I'm hoping that they actually make that into a, an official costume in the Board of Connections and make a new move set for him with Purple Lightning. I think it'd be sick to see him have an actual move set with Purple Lightning in it. Mm hmm. That'd be cool, yeah. I know. Yeah. Oh, I, that's, that's what I was going to tell you earlier. So. I know you say you don't play Sh uh, Shinobi Strikers, and for any of you who don't play it either, like, I don't blame you, because I just, like, three days ago, started picking it back up to see how it looks again, and I had this awesome build for survival mode, and so the, the, the build is Wooden Dragon Jutsu, which, if you hit an opponent with it, it, A, reduces their ninjutsu cooldown time, and also it heals you a little bit and does damage to the opponent, then I have Sharding Gun as the second ability, which is just like an extra substitution jutsu. And then I have, for the ninja tool, I have like Flash Medicine, which is just heals you and speeds up your cooldown time. So when the match started, I had this guy like kill me like right away. Like he hunted me down. So, uh, and then he stood there because like whenever you get killed by somebody, it, it'll show who killed you for a few seconds. Right. And the guy killed me and he was just standing there as a way of bragging that he just killed me like talking smack um so i was like all right you know what i cleared my calendar i'm doing nothing but irritating this asshole and so <laughs> I, i'm not getting around so when i because this is a survival match and so it's like a battle royale and i literally did not participate the rest of the match because you also get points as you gradually survive like if you don't, if you consecutively survive without getting killed, you also rack up the points. So I was like, all right, I'm doing nothing for the rest of this match, but killing this guy. So I did not participate in any of the fights throughout the match. Revenge. I, I hit. So like, I know I, I hid, right? So I hid and I waited for my Kamui ult to charge. And literally at the last 10 seconds, I saw him fighting with somebody and I Kamui both of them and he, he was out for like five seconds, so all I had to do was survive for the last five seconds, and I ended up getting first because of that combo. And the guy rage quit before the results came in. <laughs> I was like, "Well, you, you should have been talking crap. Like, if that ha if he had been talking crap, I'd have been. I would have probably just like still fought everybody else. But I was like, nope, because you wanted to brag. I'm literally gonna hunt you down. Nice. So, yeah, it was it was pretty funny. Damn, we've been streaming for two hours and a half. Wow. Yeah, I, I got another like 20, 30 minutes if you're still good with that. I, I have to actually go quite soon, so I think we should be wrapping up. Oh. Okay. But before we go, subscribe to Lightning Snow one last time. I'm telling you guys to do so because there's going to be a video tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. And also ring the notification bell. This always helps in the YouTube channel because you get notifications right away. And if you watch the videos, uh, when they come out, you know, the first hour or so, it, it helps the video to, you know, spread around YouTube, which is good. Uh, yeah, but please do so, guys. Like, I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I, I, I got it. I, I, I got, I got it done. I got it done yesterday, early yesterday. Got all the editing done. Nice. Uh, so. Yeah. First um, link in the description below. Does this live stream stay on your channel, or is it just? Um, I'm go I'm I don't do that because it kind of messes up the algorithm. But I will probably oh, okay. post um, the vod on my second channel. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I think I'm I think I'm subscribed to your second channel. I'm pretty sure I am. Yeah, if you're not subscribed to my second channel in in chat, uh, the links in the description below as well. Um, after subscribing to Lightning's Snow, go subscribe to my second channel. Cause that helps as well. Uh, video also, came out there yes today actually. <laughs> if, uh, if you're interested, y'all, like, cause there's, I've had I've had Dago on like what four of my videos in the past or something like that. So yeah, so I I have him on my channel. So y'all. Yep, I do. So so if you're interested, go and uh, look at on those those contents, bro. Nice. You can. Someone said I, 
someone said arena fights are cool and all, but give me an arc sync thing. Someone made okay, so someone made an RPG game of Naruto that's yet to like come out like fully because they're really I guess yeah it's I don't think it's much in development. They're just they're taking their time with making it, but it it's literally an RPG. Uh, huh arts a game so like you make your own character and you kind of like do uh quests and whatnot that could be cool uh, i guess yeah I, I think that's what i think that's what shinobi strikers was trying to do sort of but they just kind of fell short because i don't like the way it plays but there's something about it that's okay to me like if i'm not playing anything else i'll play it but uh-huh. like i rather store i rather just a better version of storm 4 yeah well I'll try the connections game when it comes out, but that's pretty much it. And if that is an RPG game, then I will too. But well, yeah, as I said, like, I'm not entirely like expecting a whole lot from connections. I'm just hoping that like the characters that I play with already have like a different move set or a different mm-hmm. costume. Those because I'll still play it because I know everyone else will be playing it. That I well, I yeah. imagine they're probably gonna play that more than Storm Four. So oh, for sure. Yeah. So yeah um thank you so much for joining me today in this live stream mr lightning no problem thank y'all thank y'all for having me thank y'all for don't forget to don't forget to subscribe down below post link in the description for tomorrow's video yes sir y'all be ready for the for the cooking bro i got it i got a a microwave see you guys next time bye bye thanks for for supporting the live stream and everybody all right